Oh, shoot. He just won a Super Bowl. I don't think you really need to say more than that than he's a world champion. He is the first first round pick, Kansas City Chiefs, and what, the first Greek player to ever win a Super Bowl. George Karloftis. Am I getting all that right? First Greek player to win a Super Bowl? Not first Greek that's player what, to be in the NFL. That's what they're saying. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. That's what that's what people are saying. I think it's first Greek born. Greek born. There's, there's been other people of Greek descent, but I, I, I was actually born and raised in Greece, so I think that's where the uh, difference lies. Have you met the guys in the back offices that do this this research to find this stuff out? Because <laughs> I don't know. No, I haven't. I don't know who found it out. I know uh, I got tagged on it. Purdue football tweeted us. It's like, all right, there's some legitimacy there. Might have, might have started out with some people on Reddit or something just yeah. <laughs> in, the, in the depths of the internet. But somebody found it, and you know, somebody legitimized it, obviously. so. Well, the Greek people are proud, and they're proud of you, and I think that is something to celebrate You know, when one of your own – uh, is able to do what you did. And, and it's like, you're just not there going to a Super Bowl. You're an amazing football player. Like, your career at Purdue and, uh, and even what you did in your rookie season, you're, you're, you're going to, like, I'm going to put this conversation aside for the day you go into the Hall of Fame because you've got that kind of talent. And I'm not the only one that says this. I mean, you're, you're a beast on the edge. Yeah, I, I appreciate it, man. I just... Uh... You know, ever ever since I uh, was introduced to this game, I think eight eight nine years ago, uh, you know, I, I I fell in love. You know, almost uh, to the point of addiction. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's uh, obsession, addiction. You know, whatever you want to call it. And this, it's something I love to do. You know, and I found a, a real balance between uh, my faith. I'm Greek Orthodox. My family and uh, football. You know, so for me, that's that's what my life really consists of. And uh, you know, try to try to treat all those things equally. And, you know, this it's been a really good balance for me. And I, uh, I absolutely love the game. And you didn't start playing until you were 13, right? Uh, I think 14, 14. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, you know, I was thinking about that. There, there's, there's something to it. Now I didn't start playing football until I was 13, but I have, I had nowhere near the caliber of talent that you have, but there's something to be said about the guys that played it their entire lives where you and I think even today more than ever because you know your generation has got an even shorter attention span you know and that's just yeah. because of the way the world works it's not a shot it's just the way the world works so I think like if you were to start playing in like peewee at five or six you get burned down a lot faster I mean that's tacking on another almost 10 years of playing yeah. football I think there's something to that you know and uh something I talk with people about pretty often is the fact that I, I played multiple sports I grew up playing multiple sports just just about everything, you know, water, I, water polo was something I, I was really big into Greece, track and field since I was a really young kid, uh, basketball, tennis, soccer, everything you could possibly think of. You know, I, I was, uh, I, I, you know, that's what I like to do. I, I like to play sports growing up. So, you know, I think that just like you said, a diverse background growing up so that you don't get, you know, you're not just into one sport growing up. You just have that, that diverse background, kind of trying everything out, see what you really love. I think that, uh, that, that really helps out. And, you know, the, the getting burnt out part, you know, it's just like after the season, you know, we, we we're going at it for 26, 27, 28 weeks, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, just doing the same thing and same schedule, you know, and all that stuff. So the bye weeks really help uh, in the NFL. And now after the season, now that we're in the postseason, you know, just or in the off season now, I guess, uh, just got to take some time off, just relax, rest, uh, you know, and all that stuff. So, so that doesn't happen. Yeah. Do, uh, do a little decompression, yeah, right? You got to, got to yeah, relax the brain. Exactly. But I think there's some too, you know, starting football a little younger and not being burnt out. It's more fresh to you. It's more new to you. You have more things to learn. And, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of it's, uh, based on physical ability either way. So, right. It depends. So you, 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 you win the biggest, you know, achievement in your rookie season, which I've always thought that was the coolest thing ever. Like for people, you know, and I never get to talk to, I mean, I did a year of sports talk radio, but I don't think I ever talked to anybody that won a Super Bowl in their rookie season. I mean, it's like, 
you, you can only go down from there. You know, there's a, there's a lot more to go. But your rookie season was different. I mean, you played like a first round pick for the Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, they picked you for a reason. Um, yeah. You know that I remember in the draft there was conversations of you know going receiver. I don't think that it had been announced that Tyreek had been traded or not yet during the draft, but there was talk like getting a receiver, getting a receiver. And you guys ended up getting Sky Moore, which was great. I thought he would have a, had a bigger year than what he did, actually. But that walk from where you're with your family and they call your name till you get to the podium to get with Roger Goodell seemed like it took forever. <laughs> That was, the, that was a long walk. That was a long walk, uh, kind of running the back in my mind right now, you know. It was, uh, you're really happy. You're trying to process that. If that you know, because when you're drafted, you don't really know where you're going to go. You're like, all right, these teams are really interested, so I might be able to go to this team or this team or that team, you know. Um, you know, you're thinking, oh, Kansas City, you know, what are, you know what's that? Uh, you know, is it, so, like, I, I – you're trying to wrap your head around everything, you know, the defense, your teammates, where you're going to live, you know, the the team and everything like that. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a long walk. Long walk. It, 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 at the bottom line, at the end of the day, you're just, you're just happy. It's just you know? so exciting. You get, look, and the draft, in the draft, we went defense for the most part. Yeah. You know, I think that, that showed we had a lot of youth. Not well, only in our defense, but in our team. And uh, I think that was a, that was a good thing. And, you know, it's going to be good for the next few years, for sure. For sure. You definitely proved me wrong in the Super Bowl. I did not think it was going to end that way. <clears throat> not too many people did. Not too many people did. But that's what uh, we've kind of done all year. Uh, you know, people didn't think we'd uh, win the AFC West. People didn't think mm. we'd make it to the playoffs. People actually thought we'd finish last in the AFC West. Um mm. You know, yeah. just kind of what we do. You know, you practice with Mahomes all the time. Um, now, after the Super Bowl, uh, even if you are a Kansas City Chiefs hater, uh, you have to have the utmost respect. I mean, you know the guy's got not just talent, but superhero talent. And then you watch the tenacity and you watch the intestinal fortitude. You watch all that. You watch the pure athlete in Patrick Mahomes, the second half of the Super Bowl, when you knew his ankle was bum, and he hurt it again even more, and it just disappeared because he's mentally that strong. I mean, that's yeah. just next level shit, right? No question. Yeah, no question. I mean, he's in uh right now he's in a league of his own, and he has been for quite some time. You know, he could do everything as a football player. There's nothing he can't do, and he's uh, he's going to finish as one of the best best players of all time. I agree with that. I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. And, and so um, let's talk about the game itself. You know, leading up to the game, you know, you got a, a full week or two, you know, of, of all the media and the talking heads and people asking silly questions and trying to get sound bites from you guys. Are you guys prepped for that experience, especially if you've not done it before, like yourself, um, before the Super Bowl? Not necessarily prepped, you know, the, the, the coaches and our communications, people that handle the, the media and all that stuff, they they kind of alert us like, hey, you know, it's going to be a lot between practice and media. There's going to be a lot of funky questions. Uh, just be ready for it. It's going to be a lot. You know, just be respectful. Don't give the other team any bulletin board material. Give them all the praise and, uh, you know, just just keep your uh, keep your focus on just that we're there to win a game. And that's it at the end of the day. Yeah, I, I read something that Travis Kelsey had said, which I think in my mind will go down as one of the classiest things I've ever seen uh, an athlete say. He said that Jalen, and paraphrasing, Jalen Hurts could have won the MVP of the Super Bowl even with the loss. I just thought that was so classy. Absolutely. I mean, he he played his ass off, yeah. you know. He, he heck of a player. We have a lot of respect for him. And just... Just like Patrick said, if there's, you know, if there was any doubters before uh, the Super Bowl, there shouldn't be any doubters now. You know, we, we have a lot of respect for him as a defense. He presents a lot of problems because, you know, guys with, with dual threat quarterbacks, the uh, the misconceptions like, oh, yeah, they can't. They're just athletes. You know, they can't really throw. Well, he can prove that he can do it all. Mm. Uh, and he's done that all year. And we, we knew that. I think the world knows now. So he's uh, – you know, he, he's one of those uh, elite guys, you know, when you talk about when you talk quarterbacks in the league, I think. What was the locker room pep talk and who gave it before you guys went out? You know, I don't, I don't, we don't necessarily do all that 
all that stuff. You know, if you're not ready to do the soup, if you're not ready to play in the Super Bowl, you're not really hyped up on your own. There's something wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like what everybody dreams of. You know, for the the whole year and most guys for their whole lives. You know, so uh, you know, it's kind of like, all right, let's go, let's go win this game. You know, it was more more in that more along those lines. Um, you know, halftime. You know, there was some adjustments that needed to be made. You know, because we weren't. Uh, doing so hot or we didn't we just didn't play like we thought we were capable of mm. um, so we had we had to do a couple of things differently just it was more lying on execution really uh, so we just took a step back and said hey guys calm down let's, uh, let's, go, let's go out there and execute and uh, you know it turned out to be in our favor would it be uh, a real shot to you if you lose any of the coaching staff on the defensive side of the ball moving forward or as a professional athlete, that's just kind of status quo. You get used to it. I mean, there, there's two sides to that, right? I, I love all of our coaches. You know, I love Spags. I love my defensive line coach, Joe Cullen, I, I, all the other position coaches, you know. So, yeah, it, anytime something like that happens, it hurts. Uh, you know, I, I don't think anything like that's came out, but I, I understand the question. Uh, you know, yeah, it, it hurts. Whenever you lose – a player, a coach, whatever the case may be, you know, everyone talks like, hey, this this team will never be the same just because of the turnover in the NFL. Um, but, yeah, it's the reality of the situation and, and the reality of the uh, the profession. Uh, so, you know, you kind of just roll with the punches and, you know, you just uh, you keep moving forward regardless of what happens. Yeah, I, I always wanted to know that, too. You know, I, I got some friends that are intertwined <clears throat> with the Steelers organization and, you know, years ago when they had different offensive coordinator changes and whatnot, you could see it. I mean, it was, it was plain as day on the field and, you know, talking with them, they're just like, it's just not the same. We just don't get it. You know, it's just, we're not performing, you know, and every year of your guy's career is the most important year of your lives. Cause you don't know if you're going to have another year. And, and, and so you've got to, yeah. every year is you've got to win the Super Bowl, Right. I mean, that's exactly. kind of mindset. Yeah, I think, I, I think it's underappreciated and undervalued by, by most people how much of an effect a position coach or just one player can have on the team. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I know, you know, we, we got a new position coach on the D line and uh, you know, I, I know the guys that will say like, that he made a huge, huge impact on the team. It's in, in our, in our uh, defensive line, you know, we had some moving pieces on the staff and uh, you know, that, that worked out really well you know the linebackers got the d-line coach and they absolutely loved him so everybody meshed great together uh and you know they everyone worked in perfect harmony you know it was all it all, it all just clicked for us you know and uh you know even with the even with the guys on the team uh you know we had a few a few veterans you know on our team uh but we had a lot of young guys so that really balanced itself out well and i don't think people <clears throat> appreciate well if you're not a if you're not a football if you don't know football you're not going to appreciate like what you do i mean you know as a defensive end you're you're part of your job is not necessarily to be unless you're you know third and long and you're going after the quarterback you need to take you need to keep guys off the backers so like you're right. you're that's part of that's one of your responsibilities i mean a defensive end really only has three responsibilities and you do such a good job of that, and it, and and it even amazes me as the you know the pros behind the microphones that are doing this. Like, who am I to say? But they don't bring that to the uh, to to the fans' attention more of what each position does because it's not always about sacks and tackles and interceptions and yeah. and, and stuff like that. It's about making sure Chris Jones is open or able to to, to make the tackle. Or it's a, it's a, absolutely right. Yeah, it's you know like what I'm it's, a, it's a it's a it's a team game. You know when it's a lot of the time, like if you see, you know, a great guy like Chris or, you know, a guy like myself and you know, you, on the stat sheet, you don't have anything. You zero, zero, zero. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you had a bad game. Mm -mm. I don't know. Not necessarily, at least. Right. You know, maybe you had a specific task. You know, for me, uh, speaking broadly, as a defensive end, what, what's my task? To stop the run, mm -hmm. to drop when asked and to rush the passer how do you rush the passer you got to earn that right by stopping the run to get them in those pass rushing situations you know those third and long second and long type situations so we can get after the quarterback because that's you know that's what everybody wants to do in my position uh so you got to be good at doing everything else yeah. and that's how that's how it kind of works you know and stopping the run isn't sexy it's uh it's 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 a grind and uh it gets dirty and nasty in there uh 
you know, but at the end of the day, you're just trying to, trying to stop the run, maybe create a pile, mm. uh, get the guy down, you know, but whether it's just yourself or five other guys with you. Um, and those, you know, you see the sacks, you see the PBUs, you know, those happen on the, those pass rushing type situations. And, you know, that's what the fans really like. And, and we, we love playing those situations too, but, uh, you know, they're just a part of the game. Just like you said, it, it, one of my favorite things was to, to trail, uh, or to, to, to take the tackle, the, the pulling tackle, you know, head on and take out his leg. And it was just always the cleanest, cleanest hit, you know, because these big, bulky, goofy guys are, uh, you know that, and you're down low, and you just swoop up, and your 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 job is to, you know, obviously block the hole, and that was always like it, it wasn't sacking the quarterback, it wasn't making a tackle, blocking a pass. I was never athletic enough to drop back, but it was just that was my favorite thing to do was to, yeah right was to take the leg out of the pulling tackle. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah, now, now, you know, specifically towards, you know, any, any kind of a gap scheme play with a, with, a, with a tackle or a guard or even a center sometimes pulls, uh, you know, that, that's kind of like the wrong, wrong arm type technique. Uh, that's a little more uh, old school to kind of put it at that. <laughs> now what you're kind of taught is to be able to go inside and if he bounces out, you can play both. Mm-hmm. But what offenses did that since they know that we're doing that is – They'll bring the tight end, and he'll actually cut you because you have to stay square. Oh, and that, that so he'll cut you, and then he'll take you out. You know, so you have to be able able to combat that. Whether it's you take him out before he takes you out, or be able to avoid him. So there's there's that that chess game, that game theory uh, that goes on within within a game with uh, you know, I guess a guard or a tack could do that too. But there's uh, there's that. I, I got to tell you, out of every time that somebody has said something that I was out of touch with, whether it's pop culture, music, or movies, I've never quite felt so old at 47 than when George Karloftis just told me I was old for my defensive end tactics. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all good. It's funny. Um, did you get it? I'm, I'm assuming the answer to this is no, but, you know, along with the Super Bowl, the festivities of the halftime show, um, I heard a rumor that uh, was it Andy Reid that said if you guys take a peek out or something you're in trouble or, or if you have anything to do with the halftime show you're in trouble. Did you guys take yeah, a peek? No, no, nobody took a peek. Uh, you know, it was uh, I think it was in reference to Rihanna, like they're like yeah, you know, halftime show because you go through like the logistics uh, when you first get there in Phoenix that Sunday night or that Monday. You know, they they kind of go over you know. Uh, scheduling wise the media during the game you know there's a longer pre-game there's a longer halftime so just being prepared and just uh when they were presenting that they're like yeah the halftime shows rihanna so everyone started going crazy you know Woo! you know and uh coach Rita, just so you know you know whoever peaks uh uh, you know, goes over there and watch the halftime show, you might as well just stay out there because you're not coming back. You're not coming back and watching me. I'm going back out or so, something to that extent. Uh, you know, so so no, to answer your question, nobody went out there and watched. Uh, mm. But it was so loud that in the locker room we were able to hear, you know, because we have a 30-minute halftime. We usually have yeah. like an 8 or 10-minute halftime. So you have points in time where you're just eating or stretching and just not really talking or doing anything. Yeah. Uh, because of that, that performance. So you, you're able to hear a little bit, but nobody, nobody even thought of uh, going out going there. Out there. Uh, I have a, a good buddy of mine who uh, played for the San Francisco 49ers, and he was on before the Super Bowl. He uh, was part of the dynasty days, uh, Randy Cross, who, you know, he actually hiked the ball to Joe Montana. And so he's got three rings. And we, we when we had him on uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, we, we talked about the halftime, you know, normal game, eight, nine minutes, you're in, you get talked to, you're out. You don't really cool down all that much. And if you are, it's easy to get back warm. 30 minutes is a whole new world. And Randy was saying they actually train you guys going into the Super Bowl how to handle halftime because of how long it is. Is that true? They go go over a lot. You know, you have a lot more time, just like you said. So you got to make sure you get something to eat. You got to get back warmed up. Uh, you have a lot more time for adjustments. So, you know, at first you just sit down, kind of take to yourself, get a couple extra breaths, whatever the case may be. You might roll out, you might stretch. Guys that are feeling a little banged up might need to get with the uh, trainers or the chiropractor, whoever the case may be. So you have a lot more time. 
which uh, if used correctly, can be a huge benefit. Yeah. Hypothetically speaking, if you were not a professional football player and you were an official for the NFL, would you have called the holding call at the end of the game? Did he hold him? Uh, yeah, that's how you guys got into field goal range. So, I mean, that's what they said at least, right? I think it was pretty clear cut that he hold him. He, he did, he him. And, he, and he admitted it. I don't think that's – why is that a debate? Uh, I, just because I, it, ha- so, it happened in the fourth quarter doesn't change that that's the call. If it would have happened in the first quarter, it would have been the same call and nobody would have been complaining about it. So I don't know why – oh, yeah, it's a it's – a, it's a pivotal time of the game. We're just not going to call what's right. I just, I don't understand that. So, so Greg Olson, who was on, on commentary in the game, made a big deal about, you know, like it was ticky tacky or something. Now, even he admitted he held. So, I mean, it, you're right. Yeah, that's, it's, 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 that's that just the, it's the right call, regardless of whether it's ticky tacky or, you know, it's, it's, it's too big of a moment to make a call like that and all that stuff. It's, it's the right call. Mm-hmm. You know, so, and the other, the other argument is that the ball was uncatchable, but in the rule book, that has nothing to do with the call. Yeah, so I don't, you know, they're making a big deal about it. If, if what, whatever. Game's over. We won. It's- <laughs> Have you gotten used to the storyline stuff where the media tries to make a bigger deal of things than what it is? Because you know, you have to know. You're a smart guy. You know that there has to be more than the game in order to attract eyes and ears to the sport. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I think there, there's a big, there's a big element with that. I think they make a big deal out of a lot of things, but they also met the the media, the people on on social, whoever the case may be, right. make a big deal about certain things. But other things, you know, where you see where we where we think it's a big deal, they don't even notice. You know, uh, I know for us, you know, earlier in the year, Chris Jones had that one. Uh, Sack on uh, maybe it was a Derek Carr, and they called it sack fumble. They called it unnecessary roughness or roughing the quarterback. And I was like, "What the heck?" Yeah, you know. I think from from then that's from a defensive end's perspective. I'm sure every position has those those things, you know, and the, those game changing plays at the end of the day. But uh, you know, it's it's all up to the refs, you know. And we're gonna wh- whatever they call it's not it's not you could do much other than than challenge it, you know. All the the complaining and going up to them and talking is not really going to change their minds. Uh, so I, just like I said, you got to roll with the punches. I, I don't know how you guys do it on the defensive side of the ball. It's almost like you're playing two games. You're playing one game of football and one game to make sure it doesn't look like you're doing whatever. I mean, it's a, it's the NFL has kind of turned into a lot of perception is reality. Um, and, and, you know, some of these, you know, quarterback hits or it's it's the game i mean that's what you do i mean it's it's not like you're out there trying to t- trying to yeah. kill them kill them it's not bounty gate again you know it's nothing like that yeah i don't i i understand where the the uh, rules are coming into effect i think some of the, i think some of the time they could be a little uh i don't know what the right word is but you know when you put your weight into someone while you really sh- you know couldn't or shouldn't have you know, or could have prevented it. I think that's where it comes into effect. You know, a lot of time you have the late those hits, or they're you're within a step or two, which is legal. But then you go ahead and slam and put your weight into him, and they'll call that. You know, because you didn't need to do that. You know, on a sack, you know, he's holding the ball. Uh, for the most part, it's fair game. Uh, you know, just don't just don't absolutely try to demolish him. I think that's I don't know if that's fair, but that's that's reasonable, and you know. With those changes, you can prepare accordingly. You know, you could do drills in practice where you, where you hit someone and you, you pull off, you know, just so you don't get a, a penalty for your team to negate the great thing you did. So just, you know, just because those rules are, you, you got to change your preparation a little bit, but not nothing crazy. You just got to be a little more conscious. What did you do to celebrate after winning the Super Bowl? We had a little, uh, you know, in the, in the locker room. I mean, we were there till late. You know, maybe till 11 o'clock midnight, you know, Arizona time. Uh, so, you know, we were there for a while, you know, just partying, going crazy. And then they had an after party at the hotel. Um, you know, then guys went their own ways from there. Um, but, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Are you a party guy or are you just kind of chill? Not, not really. Not yeah. really, to be honest, no. Yeah. Because you, you have, a, like, a, a steady girlfriend, right? You've been going out for a while. So you just like yep. won the Super Bowl, honey. Let's go grab some macaroni and 
Watch some Netflix. No, 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 no. I mean, my my family was there. Uh, yeah. You know, I had my family there, friends there. Uh, no, that's not one of those types of nights. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, you're you're going out. You're hanging out with the guys, uh, with your family, with your loved ones. So yeah, it was it was a good night. Are you able to? I, I never was able to do this in my twenties, and I even struggle with it in my forties. Is to live the day, and y- y- like we can't even fathom what it's like to be on that field and when the clock goes to zero and win the the in my opinion the most prestigious championship that there is. Just because I'm a football fan. Are you able to absorb that moment and still understand how big it is? You sure as heck try. You know, I I know for me after the game, I didn't want to do any interviews. I think I only did like one or two. We usually do a bunch after the regular game. Uh, I just want to like look as I, I just want to enjoy the moment. I just want to live in here and not even like pull out my phone and record like like most people do nowadays, you know, like you see the when LeBron broke the scoring record, like you see the picture and everyone's like on their phones, like, oh my gosh, he just broke the record. Like it's not on video already. <laughs> um, so for me, it's like this, this is my camera, you know, my eyes. Uh, and that's how I like want to take in and absorb things, you know, just like take a deep breath and just like, wow, like we, we really just did something, uh, you know, take it in for myself, you know, th- th- those moments, you know, me going back on, uh, on my camera roll and like, Oh yeah, like that was great. You know, it's nothing like me physically being able to remember it and really just like, yeah, we, we really did that. You know, and that for me, that was, that was huge. Yeah. Very cool. Um, have you started a, a rivalry with any quarterback yet in the NFL. And I, let me get, let me give you kind of a backstory behind this. I've all, I always thought it was cool. The Warren sat Brett Favre when they played the base played each other back in the day and the, 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 the trash talking between them, but there was so much respect between them, the defensive yeah. guy and the quarterback. Have you started anything with any other quarterback where there's a little back and forth? No, no, I'm not. I'm not a big trash talker for that matter. None of us really on the D line are big trash talkers. Um, you know, maybe a couple guys here and there. You know, we we go out there for one job and it's to win the game. Yeah. Uh, but no, 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 not yet. I mean, maybe eventually that'll happen. Uh, for me, my rookie year is just to to do my job, help the team win in any way I can. Um, so yeah, I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't like I had a oh yeah like like screw you man or whatever the case may be. Uh, I didn't know if know, there was so. anything that carried over from college or something like that. Or you're like ah, I'm gonna get you. No, I don't. I don't think I play any quarterback in college that I did in the NFL. Now I'm thinking about it. Mm-hmm. You know something that might might transpire. You know more likely to transpire is a defensive end with an offensive tackle. Right. Uh, that hasn't happened yet for me just because I've only played for one year and it's the same effect of the quarterback. But uh, that certainly may happen. You know, I know some guys, you know, just well, they don't like each other because they've played against each other so many times. And, you know, <laughs> but at the end of the day, you have respect for almost everybody in the league, you know, especially guys you go against and you, you know, they're good players. At the end of the day, you have respect for them. And then you fast forward, you know, 30, 40 years when you guys are putting on your golden jackets and you got the gray streaks in your hair and you're like, remember, remember when we would just start scratching each other's eyes out back in the day? It was a good time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, on Instagram, if you want to follow George, at George uh, Carl um, and we'll have that when we post some stuff via uh, all of our social media. Brother, it, it's so cool. Like, when I got offered this opportunity to talk to you, I was like, hell yeah, dude, this is awesome. Um, I'm so happy for you. You're such a great guy, and you have such a long amazing career you're a beast you are an absolute beast so congratulations to you your team and your family and uh thanks again for coming on i appreciate it george thank you man thank you for having me this is great hey thanks buddy congrats dude that's awesome i know you got a lot of media stuff to do but thank you so much bro thank you absolutely thank you man have a good one bye-bye Oh, we have so much to talk about. I know. You guys are going, where have you been? Well, you know where I've been. I've been on the road. I'm uh, I'm like uh, Sylvester Stallone and over the top, you know, driving the big rig and dealing with his kid, getting beaten up by Terry Funk. Finally gets to the big dance for an arm wrestling match. 
bets it all on the line, and Hawk comes out on top. New truck, lots of money, and his kid loves him. <laughs> Wife dies, but, you know, shit happens. Uh, so, Nate, how are you? Good. Yeah. Hola, buenos dias. How y'all doing? You, 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 look, you, you look awkward. Like, like I haven't <laughs> talked to you in like three weeks, and, and I, I actually kind of forgot what we do on the podcast for a little bit, to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm like, where's Nate's <laughs> intro? Uh, well, we, we're, we're, we're going to run the interview first. So we've got to change it up. Okay. So don't ask questions if you don't want the answer, because I don't want to give the answer. <laughs> so I, I, I've got the, the interview. Like, if you would have read the sheet. I read the sheet. Then you would know that the intro goes there, and then we just don't do the, the, the names and stuff. Okay. That's just because we've got to change it up, because things are changing. Things are happening. Um, I know a lot of you on social media have, uh, have been guessing, you know, like what, what's happening and this and this and that. So here's the deal. I'm going to be com- this. This is this is the big, this is the big unveiling. All right, because when you hear this, either day of or day before it have hit the trades, and as soon as it hits the trades, uh, which is like publications in, in the broadcast industry and stuff like that, it's called trades. Um, then I can tell you now I, I I have and I will have posted something and sent something out to the premium two percenters ahead of time uh, because you know in the podcast world it's difficult to communicate because you're recording early and then you know, when something happens you can't do a lot of stuff in real time and I don't want anybody to feel like they're being left out because that's the last thing I'm not I'm I'll get to this here in a second I'm going to try to not make the same mistake that I made ten years ago and I made a huge mistake 10 years ago. I knew I was making a huge mistake 10 years ago. Nate liked to remind me of the mistake I made 10 years ago. And I'm going to, I swear to God, I'm not going to make that. I'm going to at least attempt. And you know what I'm talking about, Nate, right? Um, Right. I'm going to attempt not to make that same mistake. So with that being said, did the road trip with the wife. We were heading to California. Notice I never said where in California. There is a reason for that because uh, there's only so much I can say. This is the radio business is kind of sneaky, sneaky. Uh, I have decided to take a job in Sacramento, California. I currently am in Sacramento, California. I have been in Sacramento, California for a couple weeks. Uh, I'm not alone. I have put together a what I consider a very strong team to come into this radio station, which is 98 Rock. This will be my second tenure at a 98 Rock. One in Tampa, one in Sacramento. But I've brought Nikki D. That's me. She's sitting right next to me. <laughs> if you notice, if you're watching any of this video stuff, it looks, her backgrounds are very similar. The couch is very similar. She's literally sitting right next to me. She's just on her own video camera. <laughs> and uh, I also brought in an old friend of mine and Nate's. Um, this was, you know, I, th- I, I th- if Nate were a headhunter, Nate would get 10% of, of the cut. Finder's fee. A finder's fee, correct. <laughs> and that would be our friend Nelson. Nelson, you want to scoot over here? I can. Yeah, you can. He's just just be careful. Don't don't don't. There we go. Rawr, big Nelson right there. Oh, big boy for sure. Uh, you make me look so small. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to sit next to you. Uh, you want to sit in my lap? I yeah, can hold you. Uh, yeah, you're like a brontosaurus. <laughs> He's a large man. Mm-hmm. So this is the team that I put together, and you're like, people are like, what the fuck, Bailey? Why didn't you bring Nate? I mean, he's your, he's your ride or die. Well, Nate was offered the position, but Nate has got things going on in, in Mexico, and he moved down there with a goal and a dream, and he's not ready to walk away from that. And I totally respected that, and him and his wife have plans, and they're going to give it the best shot they can. And you never know. You know, maybe in a year, two years, three years, four years, he can join the show, whatever. But he's you got to follow your dreams down in Mexico right now, and you're doing that. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're just – very happy where we are and you know i know it, it's a great opportunity for for the show and you guys and everybody um but yeah we're just uh we're in, enjoying where we're at and we we're not ready to to change that just yet yeah totally get that you know i i will you know 
I was thinking about when we were going to record this. I go, this is going to be really tough to talk about our experience so far here in Sacramento Mm -hmm. with Nate in Mexico. Right. Now, granted, you know, he talks about Mexico all the time and how great it is and the things that they're doing. And you see the pictures and you follow Hanson's on hiatus on social media and you you see all the great fun things that he he and his wife and his and and, and Tubby Tubbs is, is doing. Uh, so I'm going to feel jealous. I mean, not jealous. I'm going to feel guilty. You, you've you had this guilty feeling a lot when it comes with, to Nate not being here with us. And I keep telling you to, like, just let it go. Like, Nate's good. He feels good. Don't feel guilty. We've moved to paradise. I, I We have. <laughs> it's really nice. I, 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 kid, I, kid, I kid you not. We have moved. The, I'm still waiting for cameras to pop out. And that Ashton... <laughs> Kucher guy to come out and go you're punked it's it I, Nate I kid you not I've never seen anything like this before but Nate's not living in, in the Bronx somewhere with dirt and rats he's in Mexico too so That's don't right. feel too bad for Nate I expect to see a Sacramento moment I want to see the train museum and the orange trees and you know the, the whole nine yards <laughs> no this place is really badass dude I mean from top to bottom the city like everybody's so nice I have yet, okay, so everybody knows about my Black Cloud. This is what the podcast is actually based off of, Bailey's exactly. Black Cloud. I don't know if I'll ever have a Black Cloud ever again. Uh, it's, I've been here for now two weeks, uh, or almost, and yeah, two weeks, and I have yet to have a confrontation. I have yet to meet a negative person. I have yet to, have an, uh, to, to run into an asshole, even on the road. It, it, I've, it's it's absolutely an anomaly. I went to a car wash with a younger guy, right, mm-hmm. working. <laughs> I mean, let's just start there, right? A younger guy working, <laughs> wearing a little ducky tie. And you didn't have no issues with him. Well, no, 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 let me tell you a story. And I roll up, and he says, hi, sir, can I help you? And I said, yeah, I just place, this is dirty, just got off a road trip. You know, a little too much information, but I'm in... I'm in Sacramento mode where everybody's chit-chatting and talking. Right. So I said, you know, I got off a road trip, hit the snow and, you know, the rain. And he's like, we'll take, we'll take good care of that. Now, have you decided what package you'd like, sir? This is like a 22-year-old dude in the middle of the day working at a car wash wearing a duck tie. Like, they all wore duck ties. But this guy, he was proud to wear his duck ties, my point. <laughs> and they What's had, a duck tie? Have feathers on it? No, it's a little duckies. The place is called Quack Quack Car Wash. <laughs> and, and it's like the cutest thing right you're like oh one i'm at quack quack car wash which is like a lot of fun to say and two uh this dude is, i'm just happy this guy's like happy to work and he's so nice so he's like pick a package sir i said uh well i'll take the the top one you know it's 31.99 or 29.99 or something he goes you know we also offer memberships and i go okay yeah i've seen i mean i've seen that done before he goes you know you pay that monthly and agree to pay that monthly and you can come back as much as you want <laughs> and I said, you know, uh, I'm I'm just in this area temporarily, and then we're moving uh, across town in in the city called Roseville. If anybody's familiar with Sacramento, it's a very beautiful city. And so I, I, you know, I don't know if there's a quack quack over there. Later, I find out there's literally a quack quack right across the street from my house. And uh, yeah, I've seen a few of them. And 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 he goes. You know what, sir? No problem. I hope you enjoy today's car wash. But if you need to come back, just let us know, and we won't charge you, and we'll sign you up for the membership. You have yourself a great day. Wow. What the shit is going on around here? <laughs> that was nice. <laughs> what the shit is going on? Everybody's too nice, you know? It's, it's, it's just the honest thing. So now I've kind of experienced four, I guess, communities in the country you know I've, i know up north the northeast mm-hmm. you know that's the go fuck yourself you know right. that's what i was born into and then you get down to the south and the south is you know i've said this before the southern hospitality is bullshit even southerners agree to this right you know you guys on our social media you're like oh dude <laughs> it's our little rib on the world <laughs> you know so you say bless your heart which is the equivalent to go fuck yourself in the midwest you guys just don't say anything 
I mean, you guys just kind of roll with it. Man. Oh, no, the, the Midwest is known for being super nice, right, I, Nelson? Right. I would, I'm would. i glad that Nate chimed in knowing that he's only from two hours away from where I'm at. And, like, that, the heartland, like, I give you Ohio might be that fake nice, that southern hospitality. But <laughs> by the time you get into Iowa and Nebraska, a little bit of Missouri, Kansas is an anomaly. But that's – I'm kind of jealous coming out here with you guys because you are experiencing such a culture shock. Like, this is Omaha. Mm -hmm. Like, Sacramento is Omaha, but there's orange trees. So the chit-chat <laughs> yeah. with the ducky tie guy, like, I expect that coming out. I'm almost going to be disappointed when I don't find it. Oh, well, yeah. I guess – Nikki, you uh, and I, you know, we we came from we came from the mean streets, right? Yeah, we did, and <laughs> and I've I've had a, an, an encounter or two here that I wasn't very happy with. You got the sassy look, though. They're not ready for your intention, man. Yeah, that's you got a look. That's we've talked about that saying. numerous times on the on the show. Is that you know you kind of bring it upon yourself. I, I don't think I bring it upon yeah. myself. No, no, no. You do. I'll tell you because we've spent a lot of time lately going out, and I've watched you order things and order drinks, and it's your body language <laughs> where it's, I'll take the apple bottom martini. <laughs> <laughs> that did look good though, and you kind of delicious. But but and and you, and you don't really say anything. You just kind of get this Joker smirk, you know, and then just kind of lean your head and you kind of shrug. It, it, it's it. <laughs> There's a, th th you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, I see it. Okay. Oh, I've witnessed them. So that's what you do, and that puts off bad energy. Bad energy. Yeah, I got, I, 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 Nate, Nate, come on, you, I, she's not a bad person, mm -hmm. but she's got that thing going, right? <laughs> I, I haven't been out to eat a ton with Nikki, but she does like the things the way she likes them. There she's going to tell you that. See, there that's that Midwestern bullshit. Which he, <laughs> he's not being. He, I don't want to upset Jason. I definitely don't want to upset Nikki. <laughs> but he's kind of hot. Now so. I got Nelson in there, and he's going to side with Jason. But I don't really want to throw him off and make him look too bad either. So <laughs> you do, it, you know. And I'll, it, how about I, you know, we're, in our bonus uh, content today for the 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 P two P or um want to want you guys to I mean, you're gonna get to know nelson here as we continue to talk but there's something extra that you guys will hear that we've had to do um because <laughs> nelson's larger than life yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's the backstreet boy yeah. <laughs> all five of them <laughs> but maybe we have to do the same thing that we do with him with you no wait we're not talking about it right now okay. just just relax okay. but just, just chill, and we'll get there. But it's really helped my life, is all I'm saying. Like it's revolutionized my life. I, I, I'm telling you, I'm a therapist. Uh, so Nate, this place, I, I feel like I'm just talking to you in the audience, right? Because I mean, these two yahoos are here. So we yeah. get, we get here, and we check into our Airbnb. Uh, so we leave Vegas. You know, Rachel and I leave Vegas. We get here uh, a day before these two, and we check into our Airbnb, which is two and a half minutes from the radio station. And it's like the Brady Bunch house. Just Literally. Just not two stories. Exactly. <laughs> it has the same brick wall and everything. Right. Yeah. It's just like the Brady Bunch house. The only, one of the issues that we've had is Nelson's a large man, right? Let's just, for for those that can't see him. Yes. He's, he's you know, about four bills, right? Yeah. And add 10 pounds to whatever you're thinking. Okay. So just <laughs> heavy. Just, he's a big he's guy. Just I, I, I he's a huggable. Right. He's a huggable guy. He's a huggable guy. I don't have a TLC show, but they got me a web feature. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. uh, he, he had uh, his, his, his bed's a couch that pulls out. <laughs> it's a pull out couch. <laughs> but he doesn't. No, I don't. <laughs> Now, I think this is important because you're not happy with your pull-out couch. But I, 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 I thought about this okay. after you complained the other day, and nicely. Yeah, I don't would like this that to be known that I wasn't being a big, I wasn't giving the side the Nikki D side eye. I was just like, hey, I don't think this is popping for my body type. Is that what we're calling it the 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 N D S I the N D S E the N D S I. Here's the thing is there's a lot of things that are happening again in a good way mm -hmm. that happened 10 years ago. Like my, my career kind of goes in 10 year cycles. It's weird. And so 10 years ago when I hired Nate and he came up to Atlanta, leaving his wife behind 
for a couple months. He stayed at my house, and he slept on a pullout couch. Oh, nice. So, dude. There's, so I'm going to be living in Mexico in the next 10 years is what you're telling yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. there's, a, there's a good possibility. That's what my point was, is there's a good possibility in a decade you could be in Mexico. <laughs> I, just I, did have, well. I did have roommates, though. I had cave crickets to hang out. You had cave oh. crickets, yes. But you definitely bonded with Mr. Milty and, and, yep. and, and things happen. So, look, uh, I feel bad that you don't like your, your couch bed, but this is the only place I could find. And I'm paying for it, so I'm yeah, paying. That's... I'm picking up the tab, and there's the you know, If you wanted to go bigger, it's like an extra fifteen hundred dollars a month. No, that's insane. I no. just can't afford. That. Listen, I think you'll notice when you go back to my little hole uh, in the Airbnb here that I've just uh, folded the couch back up, and I am now sleeping on the egg crates that were on top of it on the floor. That's good. That's strong. It's like camp. I'm treating it like it's camping. Yeah. Oh. Oh, uh-huh. I didn't know that's what you were doing. Yeah, that's because when I, Nate, you'll love this. I go to the pull-out couch, right? I'm like, well, at least this will be functional. I can turn it into a couch during the day and have some room in here, you know, and set up. So I go to fold the thing up, and underneath the, the thin <laughs> mattress <laughs> is like 18 different cardboard boxes that they have used for the flooring of this bed. Oh. <laughs> So I had to pull all of that out, and then I got it folded up. Now I got my little PlayStation set up. I got my egg crate on the ground. I'm happy, man. I I I, I, I miss I messed up with the big unveiling of the radio station because I put the radio station T-shirt on. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. And you didn't uh, even ma'am. give us the memo it, to put ours on. Isn't that what you're supposed to do? You like swap shirts or something? Like when you announce something new in your life, you like oh yeah, you put no, the, yeah, it's like the draft, and they put on the hat. Yeah, or or you take it off, and you and you, you just don't you just show your naked bot, your horrible naked bot. Oh, so I can just do this, right? I can just yeah, show you, you the can t-shirt. Yeah, you can just do that. Okay, gotcha. That's All good. Right. So Wait, you, took, you got a t-shirt already? It didn't take three years? Oh, Nate. We got t-shirts. I've got so many things to tell you. <laughs> we got swag bags. I, 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 I'm, trying to, I'm trying to make this more moving forward and the future, but it's tough, man, to not even just have a quick conversation about some stuff. <laughs> uh, oh, that's fine. I, I can still live in the past because, you know, I'm, I'm not part of this. So we, we, I'll be the, the third party. So we, we go out to dinner with uh, both of our big bosses, right? Our, our program director, who's also the ops manager for Sacramento and San Francisco. He's the guy that hired me. Uh, and... Uh, his boss, our boss, she's the market manager, and she's a phenomenal, phen- both both phenomenal people, but I've just never seen management so positive and so good. Everything that you bring up is, yes, how can we get it done? It's never no. You know, it, we haven't heard one no yet. And it's not that you can't say no, because that's big boy world, but it's, hey, how can we find a solution to either make it happen or get as close as possible to make it happen? And if you disagree with it, it's, or do we want to rethink the reason why we're doing this? You know, that, that kind of, that kind of, and it's not some, you know, California bullshit, this and that. It's positive. It's positivity. It's moving forward. It's positivity. And we just didn't have that at our last place at all. I mean, I can recite the times I would go into promotions meetings and that nerdy little troll who's now fired would sit next to me thinking he's got power in the radio station when he doesn't. He's the kid that I beat up in fifth grade (laughs) time and time again. (laughs) And I would say I'd pitch an idea for either the show or the radio station. He would always, that guy, that Adam dude, he'd go, no, 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 I mean literally say to he's the product, he's the commercial guy. Shut up, you little wimp. You know? And that's what I that's what we dealt. That's why I stopped going to the meetings. Because, you know, I wasn't gonna mess with Funyun boy. It's just he it wasn't happening. <laughs> um, I just would get frustrated. And eventually I was gonna put a hole through his chest with my fist. So this place is nothing like that. Nothing good vibrations like, here. Oh my God. All good vibrations. We had a meeting with the engineers. All right. The head engineer, chief engineer, not Native American chief, but just like that's his title. And we're in this stu- we're in our studio. And I have a list of things that I've written down. And everyone, 
oh, yeah, it's done. It's not a problem. Working on it. Absolutely. That's really a good idea. I can't believe we didn't think about that earlier. I'm like, oh, where am I right now? Yeah, with an engineer. Wow. Was, have you with ever had that? With an engineer. With two engineers. I was waiting, and I still haven't heard this noise out of their engineer team. It's my favorite thing when they're ready to wind up and, and shoot you down, and it's, well... It's always three <laughs> E's and four L's. Well, <laughs> and not one time. I, they're smiling. Have you seen an engineer smile? Forget them being nice to us like they're happy to be alive. Yeah. They, the, everybody's so stuck. It's crazy, man. The thing that wow. threw me was when uh, Bailey's going through a slip with one of the engineers. And he's like, yeah, have they talked to you about this? And the, and the guy's like, no. And he's like, oh, wait, I think they did. They're looking at it. We're, we're trying to order it from Australia. In my mind, I said, what is Bailey having them order from Australia? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, we're trying to reach out to the people in Australia and order it. I'm like, but just, but what? just even that first part you said where, <laughs> uh, the, the younger engineer, his name's Jonathan. He says, uh, he goes, Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, he admits that yeah. that conversation happened. Mm -hmm. You know, we come from a world where nobody wants to admit fault. They don't want to admit that something, ha it's, it's, it's all a big game. It's a lie. It's, it's a ruse. It's, it's it's whatever. Um, it's nothing like this here. So the the radio part of it, and it's all very communal. So there's no like there's no, very few little private offices. Everybody kind of sits out in the open, uh, which is way cool because you see everybody and you talk to everybody. You're talking to the general sales manager. You're talking to the local sales manager. You see everyone, uh, and every, the promotions department's right there, front and sun, center. Nobody's hiding anywhere, and it's it's a beautiful facility it's brand new they just built it so we're moving into a really really good spot um i will also say this and i kind of alluded to this on some episodes without saying what it was this has been in the works for a very very long time uh, and i feel bad that i couldn't tell you guys but you know how it works i just couldn't tell you guys so the radio station itself is the best programmed rock station i've ever heard and that says a lot because of my love for my station in orlando this station plays everything from um, I, uh, you've got Disturbed, Shinedown, Metallica, Tool, to Bob Marley, Johnny Cash, uh, House of Pain, Beastie Damn, Boys, cool. yeah, um, 21 Pilots, and I say Bob Marley, I said Bob I mean, there, there's a Candlebox, Skid Row, and Motley Crue. It just it, it's 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 a rock station that I've always preached about putting together. It's a rock station that you know all the songs. And even Rage said this the other day when we were, when we got it coming into Sacramento, we were listening to it. And I can't tell you the last time I've listened to, to Terrestrial Radio. It's been a minute. I didn't even listen to Terrestrial Radio when I was on Terrestrial Radio, and sure the hell didn't listen when I wasn't there. So the the. The station is programmed so well that even if you don't like one of the songs, you'll still listen because you know you'll like the next one. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm looking at, like, the playlist that's played in the last hour. Uh, Puddle of Mud, Nirvana, Guns N' Roses, uh, Queen, Alice in Chains, uh, Stone Temple Pilots, Sum 41. Yeah, it's a fucking awesome yeah, mix Queen. in there. Also, yeah, Queen, right. you know, Freddie Mercury, David Bowie, Under Pressure. I mean, it's, it, it's everything's in there. Uh, I heard House of Pain last night. I was like, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Well, gorillas like, are on there. Gorillas, yeah, Blur, too. You mm -hmm. know, as like a guy who got into radio, because this is like what I love doing, broad, the podcast, the radio, all of that stuff, this is the radio station that they told you doesn't exist. Yeah, you might want to go work for a radio station that plays all your favorite songs, but rock radio really doesn't. You're not going to find good rock signals anymore. It's all going to be pop and country, and you're just going to have to get used to that. So, like, this is like a fantasy station to me. I, I've been telling people, I, I was out with our program director last night. We went to one of the numerous casinos that are all within 20 minutes of my house. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, <laughs> they're awesome, too. Yeah. Uh, I, I told him, I said, you know, with all due respect, and I don't have that, uh, my relationship and their relationship, they just started a relationship, but I've known this guy for a very long time. He's a phenomenal person. He's a phenomenal programmer. Uh, he's He's gotten a lot of bad end of the stick deals in, in his years. But, um, you know, I have a, I can bullshit with him. I can be honest with him. I can, 
it, it's not a game, right? I, there, there's no negativity. There's no, I got to watch what I say because he's going to go and tell. It's none of that. None of that pressure, none of that feeling, and it's not bullshit. It's for real. It really, really is. And <clears throat> you just try to work things out, you know, and, and find solutions. And this is the life that I like. You know, when you're part of a negative environment, you – have almost a t- we well, have a tendency almost by default to become part of your environment <clears throat> and it sucks this is great this is pit but anyway i told him last night i said you know with all due respect to, to to the radio station um i've been telling people that this what you're doing and what this company is doing it's we're we're working for odyssey i said it's not normal and i go and that's sad because what we're experiencing now should be the norm how you treat your fellow employees, how management treats the talent, how talent treats other people, you know, all that stuff is, should be the norm. And it's unfortunately an anomaly here to us at least because we're not used to it. None of us are at all. It's very shocking. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Nikki and I are going, <laughs> we're almost scared. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just staying quiet, just kind of listening and taking stuff in because I'm like, all right, when's the gig up? <laughs> right. <laughs> Nick and I are kind of scared. We're going, huh? this is, so, so, something's not right here. <laughs> I wonder why every time I heard a door slam, y'all jump real quick. Like, <laughs> you guys just okay. Uh, something's just not going on. You don't have to shake this, like that. Something's just not right, Nikki. Yeah. I think they're coming to get us. <laughs> I, think this, I, think I think they've got us for some science experiment or something. <laughs> <laughs> They're harvesting us for organs. Uh, so we we I've done two casinos since we've been here. We have our first sponsor of the show. We have our first endorsement. <laughs> That's another thing. Oh, so we went out to dinner with uh, our our bosses. You know, whatever. To this amazing, a lot of great Mexican restaurants out here. Yes. And and so uh, we're we're out to dinner at this Mexican restaurant, and I got some cups done, and I gave him some cups. You know, one of our spot well. They sponsored the podcast and pours too, the the creations, creative creations with K's. And mm-hmm. and they, you know, she does those tumblers and you can do the logo. So I've a lot of you have seen the the purple BS logo out there without the better than radio on the bottom. I figured I'd kill the better than radio for the radio side of things. <laughs> right. <laughs> Smart. And the purple is because Sacramento and the Kings, and they're rallying behind the Kings. <clears throat> That's really the only sport. Well, it is the only sports franchise Sacramento has. But the Kings are doing really well. Everything else is all San Francisco based, which is forty five minutes away. So we're Forty ers fans. You can be Golden State fans. There's kind of a back and forth with that. You got the Giants. You know, San Jose Sharks, not that far uh, uh, away. So you know, you got, those are our teams, right? Anyway, <clears throat> so I got these tumblers. I give them the tumblers. <clears throat> And um, then they, Aaron goes, well, Stacy has a, uh, a surprise for you guys. I said, really? Go, yeah, you have your first sponsor, Sky River, uh, Sky River Valley Casino, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Sky River Sky Valley River Casino. Valley. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what? An endorsement. Okay. This is the first <laughs> time. <laughs> yeah. I can't. Yeah. Let me just tell you. I can't remember the last time. That I've been offered as a radio personality an endorsement without me getting it first. And then after I get it, being chastised for being too about me. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which so is crazy selfish. because that's all the endorsement is, is they ask you what you like. You are a talent. You're a public figure. If you believe in the product, you talk about the product, everyone's happy. I make money. They make money. The company makes money. That's how it's supposed to go. The last tour, I specifically was told, or at least was told to my, I think, my agent at the time, uh, Jason's only out about himself. He's going out trying to get his own endorsements. <laughs> how else are you supposed to get them when they're not selling them? Right. And, and I was, I was uh, so I stopped doing it. So I just didn't have any, I didn't have any endorsements. Then, fast forward like a year later, Jason's not being very, he's not participating in sales and trying to help get endorsements. Oh, you're not sales friendly. <laughs> you're a pariah. <laughs> I just didn't understand. So we haven't even been on the air yet. Mm-mm. Our start day is March 13th, and we've already got a sponsor and an endorsement and a couple waiting in the wings. 
You know. Nate, they've got like a multi-tiered <clears throat> plan that's like layers. Yeah, okay, of yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like I'm not, I'm not yeah. getting into the details, but like just to give you an idea of how forward this company is. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, that's impressive. Yeah. Not used to that. Yeah, like. Mm-mm, not at all. Not at all. Yeah. And, you know, when we go on the air the first day, you know, the show's going to be fine. Um which I'll get to you guys listening and, and the mistake I made 10 years ago and, and where everybody comes into play. But, you know, I've been doing this long enough to know you can't win the first day. It's impossible. You, you just can't win the first day on the air. Um, you might win the first week, but you definitely are not winning the first day, you know, because you're going to be compared to another show or you're going to, you know, anything new sucks. And now if that's not the case, then I'm really getting punked. <laughs> right. They're like, oh my gosh, I love this new show. Yeah. Great. It, if, if, you know, if we get phone calls day one going, <laughs> man, I don't know who the hell you guys are, but thanks for being here. You guys are a lot of fun. We just, we, we, thank you guys. <laughs> I'm walking out. I'm just saying, okay, I can't take it anymore. This is, this is too trippy. We had, oh, listen to this. We had the morning show. From the top forty stations, so they have all these great radio stations. They have they have an alt station. They have a um, a classic rocker. They have a sports station. The sports guys are way cool. The top forty show we met there was like this employee breakfast that they had, uh, top of the line breakfast. They introduced us and and this, this morning show comes out and they're the sweetest nicest people you could possibly meet. You know, so excited! Radio talent meeting radio talent. Usually they get. The glare. Yeah, you're, 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 you know, most radio talent are insecure. They're going to, you know, it's like, oh, they're coming after us. They're coming after our jobs. And this, and they reached out, they hugged, they handshook, they, they offered to, t- they like, next week, lunch on us. Yeah, they wanted to take us right. out, talk. And I'm like, all right, I got to keep an eye on these guys. <laughs> no, because the, <laughs> the, the person um, who's kind of coming from the same background as me, he ran up to me. He's like, oh, hi, I'm such and such. And I was an intern, and now I'm a third mic. And I was like, congratulations. You know, I was an intern, too. He's like, no way. So he starts screaming. Oh, yeah. She was an intern, everybody. And I'm like, oh, my god. He was intense. I like him a lot. <laughs> I like him. So th- that that that's where we're at. I I hope everybody can be happy. Now you guys, you, you know, you two percenters are going. What about us? You know, wh- what happens to us? Um, and I don't want you to think I'm abandoning you because I'm not. Like I, the this is how great of a company uh, Odyssey is in my contract negotiations. Uh, I made it very clear that I needed to somehow. Uh, at least transition the podcast or stay with the podcast and not just cut it off uh, dry, you know, clean and simple. And uh, I, t- I, t- it was, I was adamant about that. And I said, you know, I've got too many respons- <clears throat> excuse me, too many responsibilities to people that have supported this project over the past year plus, um, not only on this show, but sponsor wise and listenership wise. I said, I cannot just run from it because that's what I did 10 years ago, 10 years ago. When I left Orlando, Florida to move to Atlanta, Georgia to do radio, <clears throat> uh, most of you know the story on going to the sports station and then the rock station and how I was supposed to go to the rock station and it just didn't happen and blah, blah, blah. But when I left Orlando, I was so disgruntled and so pissed off and fairly immature about some of my choices, I guess. Um, I just wanted out. I, I, was, I was fed up with the people around me. I was fed up with the show. I was fed up with the company. I was fed up with everything. And I just wanted out. So how it worked was uh, my last day was like a Tuesday. I had booked travel to Atlanta that Thursday. So I get to Atlanta Thursday, two days to find a house. We found a house to rent, Rach and I did. And then we went to Vegas and got engaged and stayed there for five days, flew back, packed, and moved. Mm. I mean, you think this is crazy what we're doing here because we are leaving our families behind for a short period of time. But uh, that was that was that was nuts. And while I was doing that, my the people I worked with at the time took that as a way to take shots at me. And they were very vocal on Facebook, which I believe the comments are still there. So, I don't know, we should probably delete those. Um, 
Nate, actually, you're cleaning it up, right? Or you've cleaned it yeah, up? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. clean that up, too, if you, will, if you don't mind. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll just keep the good ones. Yeah, just, yeah, just, just keep the good ones. But, but I'm reading this as I'm in Vegas, and, and, you know, my cell signal's bad at the time, and so I couldn't. But I didn't want to reply. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to reply. The two people that were the pissed off the most were my wife, or Rach and Nate. Oh. And, and, and they're like, dude, you got to say something. You got to say something. I'm like, I don't want to say anything. I'm out. You know, and if I would have said something, you know, no, I always say no one wins a Facebook argument, right? Right. Um, no one's going to win. You just keep going back and forth. The problem is, is my audience there never got closure. Uh, like now that I've revived that old Facebook page because there's like 10,000 plus uh, followers on that page, I'm going to use that Facebook page for our show. And also I have an Instagram that I've launched called It's the BS. Um, you'll see the purple BS logo because I can't use podcast the BS. That was my fault. All right. I shouldn't have done that. The YouTube channel will stay the same. Uh, we're going to use the Twitch. We didn't use the Twitch all that much of the podcast, but we're probably going to try to use it with the radio show. Um, so, so all that stuff will be, you know, and the website will have to go through the station website, um, which should be interesting. So the, the, the podcast itself will transition from platforms. So there will be a different RSS feed and all these things that you guys want it from us, um, like the the games, especially everybody right, loved the everybody games that we games. did. You're going to get that in this new version of the BS podcast, and I I'm going to then try to find different ways to add on just for the podcast audience. It's just you're going to have to go to a different place to do it, and we'll keep you updated. All I ask from you guys is I want to include you in on this because I know you know a large portion of our audience is in Georgia. Right. Based off of our old radio station. Mm -hmm. I get that. And I appreciate that. Um, this day and age, you don't have to listen to local radio. You can listen anywhere if you have <clears throat> something digital. Right. So if you're listening to this podcast and you, you know, what we've heard from people is we want more, we want more, we want more. All that kind of, well, you're now going to get five days a week plus mm -hmm. and you will get, you know, the games, the interviews, the bits and all that stuff. So our podcast at our last place that we were at was like top I think it was top 30 in the company or something people really dug the, the yeah, podcast people listen there was a lot of spins i got to see that once i was in charge of like the uploading of it so yeah so all as i ask of you is you continue to follow us on social media um you continue or you 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 go to the other bs social media the one with the purple logo and like it and like it and follow it mm -hmm. and then i'm going to join you guys in with our new audience here in sacramento and that audience kind of like what nelson was alluding to sooner than later is going to grow even bigger so we're going I'm, I'm trying to bring both my mistake 10 years ago was i left I didn't bring my Orlando audience with me. Now, I had people that really liked what I did down there and, and figured it out and followed me. But for the most part, the majority of people, I just left them in the dust. And, I, and, and to this day, I regret it. I regret it, regret it, regret it. I'm not going to do that to you guys. So um, it's up to you, though, You know, if you, if you want to continue to, to roll with us or not. Um, I hope you do because I think it would be a lot of fun. Not to say I'm never coming back. Like, I'm going to be back in May for my daughter's graduation. Now, after that, I don't know how much I'm going to be back, but maybe we can get together, grab a beer or something. I'm taking the red eye back, so I won't get in until early that morning. But Yeah, I'll probably be going back for my daughter's birthday. Um, um, she got to get her license. <laughs> so that's another thing, because we, <laughs> like, we left our families to, to come and do this job. And, and I'm not complaining about it, so Rach just left, and I'm already like... Sad. Yeah. I felt so bad for him yesterday. <laughs> I thought they were still here and going in a minute. And I came in and his bed stripped and he's just laying across it and his hands behind his head, his face red. I'm like, are you okay? Rachel's gone. He's like, yeah, she's gone. You know, I dropped her off early and I'm just sad. And I'm like, oh, okay, it's going to be okay. He's like, she left some of her perfume behind. So, you know, that was nice of her. <laughs> and, and I just was, I went in my room and closed the door and I'm like, Maybe I should have talked to him a little longer or something. I didn't, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, it's really wild, Nate, because, you know, you're the guy that I know that's known him longer than I've known him, you know? So when we right. all met together, I remember that, Jason. And that guy is not 
lamenting. He's not sad laying on a bed. He's shot out of a <laughs> cannon and moving on to whatever the next thing that has caught his fancy. So to see him have softened up as a man and as a dad and a, to have opened up as this really genuine and sweet dude, it's very exciting to be a part of this team. I just want to say that to all you guys that like I've seen many evolutions of Jason Bailey <laughs> and I'm really here for 2023. You guys are talking to me like a Madonna. Like, I just keep reinventing myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's your well, yeah, it's face? like when you don't see somebody forever and they've changed uh rather than if you see them every day it's the the change is gradual so you don't notice it so yeah exactly. nelson you've probably noticed more than anyone oh it's like a culture shock nate <laughs> so rach is back uh in roswell which is weird because we're moving to a place called roseville it's an anagram yeah. oh. of those r's uh and we've she's got to stay behind she's got to pack the house and Ariel graduates at the end of May, which is, you know, the whole plan, you know, as I've said to you guys before, you know, I, I'm, everybody knows I'm an organizer and a planner. I plan, the last contract was supposed, I was supposed to get fired this last December. And I was hoping that I could stretch it for another year or I was going to quit or I just wasn't going to renew. Definitely wasn't staying there. One of the, one of the two uh, or three. And that did, I got, I got bumped a year early. So that was cool. Cause I got to do the podcast, which was just a total blessing. Very, very cool. A lot of fun, um, learned a ton and then we, we've had a great time and we're going to continue to do it. So, uh, the, the idea was all wrapped around Ariel's graduation. Like I couldn't move. I couldn't do anything unless until she graduated. So when she graduates in May, May 22nd, you know, then it's all good. So hopefully she should be coming out with us. We've already purchased a house. So nice. Yeah, we we we, we, we <laughs> so bought nice. we bought a house before we saw it. <laughs> right. We just we just saw the pictures, and then we have an agent out here because when we were out here prior, we had been looking around for the area, and we knew what area we wanted to be in. So we uh, she sent us video. We're like, good. So as long as there's a couple things that need to, to need to happen, um, uh. As, that needs to get fixed, and then once they get fixed, we're we're in, and there's like really nothing that we have to do to it. But there's going to be a lot of pool days. A lot of pool days. They mm-hmm. have such a cool pool, and it has a hot tub. I just go get in the hot tub. Mm-hmm. That's I'll be it. right over. And it's connected to the pool, like the how the fancy rich people houses are. <laughs> she, oh, it's fancy. Mm-hmm. She she walks out the back, Nate, and she she because she just wants to see the heated pool, right? It's That's heated it. pool. She I just want to see the heated pool. I just want to see the heated pool. She goes out there to the pool. And then she uh, she goes, oh, no, Dan, there's a hot tub connected to the... It was like in couples retreat. Baby, there's fish in the floor. Yeah, baby, there's fish in the floor over here, too. <laughs> it was so cool. I'm like, yeah, thank you. It's, they didn't tell me their part. It's a thing, they you know. They didn't tell me their part. So, so yeah, Nikki, you know, left her daughter behind. I mean, that's not shocking, I know, to most people, but uh, it is very shocking. Okay, shocking. that is my child that I birth. Yeah, you just leave her places. She has never seen? been away from me since she's been born. This is really? the first time. Yes. Well, she's not a fan of her kid. <laughs> she's yes, not a, I am. She, she yes, hates. Standard. She hates her daughter. She hates her dog. Okay. Understood. Let me tell you a story real quick, Nelson. Christmas time. <laughs> she didn't put a tree up for her child. And I was you're, downsizing. And you're trying to tell me you love your child. And she, she didn't, I didn't think she threw her at Christmas. Now, for somebody that supposedly <laughs> loves God, mm-hmm. right? I don't know how you explain JC's birthday without a tree. Right. It's not his birthday. It's not a tree. I've never taught her that Christmas was about gifts and Jesus' birthday. Well, it's about giving Jesus gifts, right? Oh, but wait no, till wait till her bir- her birthday rolls around. And frankincense and myrrh. We're gonna have to have all of it. It's a yeah. month. It's <laughs> a <laughs> month event, yes. right? Jesus, we can't celebrate Jesus' birthday, <laughs> no, no. sir, Bob. But Nikki D's birthday. <laughs> I went to Mexico. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> no, my daughter, I love my daughter. Sure. My daughter's very kind of sad. She did shock me because normally she leaves during the summers and she doesn't even call me. But this time okay. that I'm leaving, like she kind of had a whole breakdown and Aww. she was crying and stuff and it made me feel horrible. So this is, I think, finally she's appreciating me because okay. now yeah. I'm gone and not her. Well, she's of an age where she can start to notice that stuff too, right? Because she's in her teens and yeah, she's going to be coming. going on 15. Like figuring so. out what it is to be a human and that transition into adult. And, yep. and so like reality's starting to set in a little bit. Yep, she texts me Going on 25. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Oh. I, 
I don't know why you guys are talking. Her daughter does not like her. Like, yeah. My daughter just loves stop, me. Stop with this story. <laughs> right? This story is bullshit. My daughter loves me. They don't like each other. She's like, once, I think a couple times, safe haven. She dropped her off at a fire station. Safe haven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we had to amend that rule because for 20 minutes we were, you could drop up to an 18 year old off at the, yeah. the firehouse. I thought that's why I saw you on KETV in Omaha, didn't I? Trying no, to drop her not. off. No, you did. Yeah, not. Was, yeah. You were about 20 she, minutes too late. They had already updated the law. <laughs> she drove herself there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just let the car roll down the street. <laughs> and Nelson, you know, has got two kids mm-hmm. that he left in the snow uh, in Nebraska. Yep. You know, so they're uh, they're cold. They're, yeah, they're so, wow, they don't have any. They don't have any equipment either. I brought their coats and everything with me. So. He just gave them a pole to breathe out of. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So you know, Nelson. You know, we're all making sacrifices, right. and uh, and we'll figure it out. You know, we thank God I have a place to live that's you know not horrible and it's near everything. That's another thing is. There's nothing that's far away. Mm-mm. You know, like in Atlanta, everybody says it's 20 minutes away. I mean, it's like pretty much any city. They say it's 20 minutes. We know in, in Atlanta, it's actually not. It's an hour and 20 minutes away because you got to add an hour of traffic. Traffic. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness. Everything here is not 20 minutes away. It's 10. It just takes 20 <laughs> minutes when Bailey's driving. That's oh, my it. God, but yes. it's really not 20 minutes because we went somewhere yesterday where he drove us there, and it seemed like forever. Thank you. But then our boss drove us back, and we were, like, back in two minutes. And then Nelson's like, how did we get here so fast? Not only that, Jason took us on the interstate, dude. <laughs> so it was like the interstate's two seconds away from the Airbnb. He hops on the interstate, boom, we're driving. had to be. Half hour. Yeah. Felt like 45 minutes on yeah. the road. Then we're taking back streets, stopping for beers, hanging out with our boss. Yeah. And it felt like we were there in 15. <laughs> Two minutes. It was so crazy. The, the good news is is I'm moving from Roswell Road to Roseville Road. <laughs> so I'm taking Roseville Road everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you you got to change with the times, friends. You got to change. God. Look, I'm a different type of driver. I'm not trying to get anywhere slow. fast. I Yeah, I'm slow. <laughs> yeah, you are a different type of driver. And we drive around in circles a lot. Okay, there's some times that I mi- because I'm not concentrating. I miss the I miss the blue line. <laughs> I don't know how you miss the lady over the loudspeaker. In 100 feet, turn left. He's not listening to her. He's, He's not. Her out. I, yes, Rage got upset with me she didn't get mad at me she got upset with me because i almost hit a lady walking across the street Ooh. i didn't see her didn't, laugh. didn't even see her How, what were you talking about that you didn't see a whole person i just i'm in a daze sometimes i my concentrate i gotta this is the other thing i gotta get back into focus i mean when i'm focused i'm like laser focused but this past year has just opened the kid up you know, I mean, just relaxed. And, I don't think Sacramento's you know, going to be good for you in that regard because you're only going to get more relaxed. So I, I think I got to get rid of the truck and get something that drives itself or smaller. You definitely got to go smaller. <laughs> yeah. Because he can't park that thing either. He got yelled at. This is the only moment he's had so far. He got yelled at at Trader Joe's by the buggy guy. Yeah, but when he yelled truck at me. was hanging in the road. He yelled at me nicely. <laughs> like he said, sir, do you, do you mind, put, you know, Pulling in a little bit more. That's that's his. That's what he said. And I said, not a problem. And he smiles. He goes, yeah, we have that problem all the time. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> that's a fight. That's a fight in Sacramento. So, you just got into. so Nikki's saying he yelled at me. He didn't yell at me. He reprimanded me. Yeah. Get back no, in he the got truck. cross with you. He got cross <laughs> with me. <laughs> uh, Artie joined a gym. So we're we're doing the gym, trying to get these oh, guys. I assume in. they have LA Fitnesses out there. No, Planet. Actually, actually, no. I haven't seen an LA Fitness. <laughs> They're yet. called Atlanta Fitnesses. <laughs> yeah, ATL Fitness. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, we're just uh, did the Planet Fitness, the quick sign up and the easy outs. Um, so the Planet Fitnesses here are open. I don't. I haven't been to Planet Fitness in a while, but they're open twenty four hours, and they've got tanning and hydro massage and. All the gimmicks, like what Crunch has, you know. Um, I didn't realize Planet Fitness had that now. I don't know if the ones in Atlanta have them or not. But uh, so we're we're all going. Yeah. And, you know, I'm trying to help these guys, you know, get, get, get a little. My muscles hurt so bad. So I, I, I know that it's working, though, because I'm looking forward to going to the gym so that I can walk on the treadmill and it stretches out my legs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So <sighs> got Bailey nice. boot, Bailey boot camp going on, Nate. And I joined a tennis facility, and I haven't started there yet, but uh, I joined. 
That they was bought all the time. logo gear. It's crazy. He yeah. just walked in with a thousand dollars worth of stuff with the name of the tennis place on the headband, everything. Johnson Ranch. <laughs> He's got the water bottle. He's like splashing it in his face. Yeah. But even even that sign up was cool. You know, meeting the pro out there is cool. And it, it's just, it, you know, I said this when I was uh, talking about my my past trip out here. You know, if you say some to somebody in Atlanta, <clears throat> you know, I'm going to Sacramento. I'm moving to Sacramento. It's a, it like immediately goes politics, right? That's where it immediately yeah. goes, and that's sad that that's what happens, and. You know, then you they don't you know, get followed up or or preluded by you know it's like, why would you want to move there? And this is usually coming from somebody that lives in Beaufort, <laughs> you know, or 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 like Cleveland, or you know, like or, or Noonan, you know. And I'm not taking shots at your city. I'm just saying, like this is a this is the capital of 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 the state. This right. is pretty cool. There's a lot of stuff going on here. This is a, a it's got. This, like a hub, and it, everything's only an hour and a half drive away. And everybody, the exodus out of California, a lot of those people are actually moving here, mm-hmm. which is mm-hmm. great for, like, property value and, and stuff like that. And then that's the other thing people will say is, <laughs> everybody's moving out of there. You know why? Because they got problems because of the politics or the this or the <laughs> taxes or this. I'm like, yeah. That's when you move to a state. That's why you go to Walmart at 1 a.m. and not during prime hours. is because you don't want to deal with the people. Mm-hmm. Right. So if there's ever a time to move to a state, it's when there is an exodus. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right? Because you're going to get better prices for housing and you're going to be more comfortable. There's not right. going to be as much traffic and congestion. But all that stuff is really more of the big metros like L.A. and San Francisco and San Diego and stuff like that. Um, Sacramento is becoming that, especially because it's so close to San Francisco. It's kind of, it reminds me a lot, Nate, of Orlando to Tampa, you know, mm-hmm. just obviously Tampa, not as big as San Francisco, but and still Bay, you know, Tampa Bay, San Francisco Bay. And then to the yeah. right is Orlando to the right is Sacramento. It's very similar. The, the setup and the feel actually, uh, everything here is is a new feel. It's uh, like a new building, the stucco, the Mexican style, you know, Spanish style tile and all that stuff. I love it. The, Even roo- the, the streets roof. look new. The streets are clean and new. <laughs> they they have the largest curbs I've ever seen. They're so tall. If you oh, hit God, a curb yeah. with your car and they're just like randomly in the middle of the street, your car <laughs> is getting screwed up. Oh it's, yeah, Tesla's not making it over that. No, not no at way. all. Not at all. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, there was something else that I wanted to bring up and I forgot what it was. Are we missing anything? Um, being locked in two times a day here. It's probably the only thing I think we didn't You're talk about. You're locked in two times a day? Yeah, because of the school right there. Oh, oh yeah. 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 <laughs> so th- this Airbnb that we have, they didn't, they didn't say this in the air. We, we met the owner and he's cool. It was kind of weird. He stopped by the other day. He's like, hey, I bought a new couch for the place. It was supposed to be here before you arrived, but it didn't. Do you mind if I... Take the old one out and swap it out. I'm like, yeah, sure, it's fine, Go sir. Uh, so we sw- so anyway, where we're at, the f- like one of the first days we were here, we were going to leave, and we started to walk out, and out in front of the house, it was just flooded. It looked like 1982 trying to get into a rock show. <laughs> it was yes. just cars and people walking around the cars. It was like the Walking Dead, right? It was just all these cars that were like, what the shit is going on? <laughs> and I'm looking around, and I don't see a school. I don't see anything. And so I, I walk out to a guy in his car by himself. Um, they're, they're, they're polite enough not to park in front of the driveway, which was nice. But he's parked right before my our driveway. Just guy in his mid-30s sipping on a iced coffee. And in Atlanta, if you were to walk up to somebody's windshield. And, they're going to look at you crazy. Or pull a gun on you, right? <laughs> so... So I kind of tiptoe up, which I'm like, oh, this is going to make it worse. Right. (laughs) (laughs) You look suspicious. And I I tap, you know, I tap on his window, and uh, and and he he rolls it down, and he says, hey, how are you? What can I do for you? (laughs) What? (laughs) What are you talking about? This Spanish guy. And I said, yes, sir. I I go, just I just got into town, and. And uh, staying at this house right here and trying to get out. And, oh, do you need me to move my truck? I'll try to move. No, 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 no. We'll, we'll wait. But what's going on here? He goes, oh, there's a school right there. And we're just waiting for our kids to come. It'll right. be it'll be clear in 20 minutes. <laughs> okay. There's a small little neighborhood, and there's cars everywhere. There's Let no way 
that these cars are going to be gone in 20 minutes. Okay. So I come inside. I'm like, guys, we're going to be here. We're stuck. we got to figure out the times so we know how to get out, especially when we're going. By the way, uh, we're doing afternoons at, at 98 Rock in Sacramento. Uh, so it's 3 to 7 Pacific time. So yeah. if you guys want to listen live, it'll be 6 o'clock Eastern, Eastern time. So we're a night show to you guys. Anyway, come back in, talk a little bit. Walk outside, all the cars were gone. 20 minutes. <laughs> they were. <laughs> Just disappeared. <laughs> and when he says st- school's right down the road, we're talking like it's three doors down. Like it's a neighbor where this junior high is at. That's how close it is to this Airbnb. Yeah, yes. they, they didn't put that in the description. No. Not, not that I would have probably known how bad it was. The other thing they didn't put in the description was in my room, the master, The there's no door in the bathroom. They're like oh swinging goodness. saloon doors. So oh, no. when Rach was staying here, and you guys know my bathroom issues, I was like... All right, you got to wait outside the door. I got to wait outside the door. I put the covers over my head. It's I've never seen a couple do this in my life. Any guy that I've been associated enough with that we're in the same space naked, mm-hmm. we can go to the bathroom together. No. I'd be coming out and uh, I'll open the door. Jason's like, oh, I'm in here. I'm like, what are you doing? We can't use the bathroom to, at the same time in the room. Somebody has to leave out. And I'm like, what? So Rachel tells me, she's like, yeah, I just had to hold my pee till he fell asleep. I said, are you kidding me? <laughs> She's like, no, because he's really funny about it, and I couldn't go to y'all bathroom because it's the middle of the night, so I just waited. I'm saying, that's ridiculous. That is literally one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard. I didn't know she had to hold her peepees. She did, until yeah. you fell asleep. You should feel horrible about it. That's I do. your wife. I do. I want to send her cranberry. I mean, what, what are you going to do when you guys get old and you got to wipe her butt? Not happening. Just oh, my goodness. The euthanasia. Why what? does she have to wait till you go to sleep, though? Like, you're weird because, no, don't come in the bathroom while I'm in the bathroom. But No, like, he doesn't want her to go either. But while he's awake? Yeah. yeah well, because there's, do- there's no door. The, that's weird to me with the no door. I can yeah. kind of get behind it a it's little like bit. It's like you're in the same bathroom. I don't like it. That's what I'm saying. Is, 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 I, really? Don't, hold on. Don't get it twisted. I don't not like my wife to not to go to the bathroom at all. <laughs> she's got certain hours she's allowed to do things. I've seen the list on the wall. <laughs> Right after she cleans up and does laundry and <laughs> cooks, she can go to the bathroom. She's right. got three bathroom breaks a day. Right. So it's just it's weird. So I mean, I'll step outside, or there was another bathroom. So just go into your bathroom, and mm-hmm. you know, and she's gone now. So it's not an issue anymore. But it was an issue. It was weird. Very weird. We've been in that situation one other time. That was in Mexico, with the Airbnb. It's so weird. It was the door. What was it, Nate? Like the door. It didn't go all the way down or something. It was like a swing. It was like a stall door or something. Remember that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And what? It was like the it was like the saloon doors, but just one of them, but to the bathroom. Right, right. But, but in that case, we was just like, hey, just leave the room, and I'll use the restroom. You know. So anyway, that's <laughs> yeah, that's I'm, I'm, I'm kind of with done that. I'm kind of with him in that. But why the saloon? Like what you do in the bathroom? There's no like delineation then between the bathroom and the bedroom. My baby daddy would sit in the bathroom and talk to me while I use the bathroom. You guys sound crazy I'll right talk now. to you through the door. Well, that's weird. You There's can't. I'm pooping right now. <laughs> Nate does the show on the bathroom. Nate, Nate does the show you, on a though. toilet. <laughs> <laughs> that's weird. All right. So uh, the next couple weeks, definitely the next couple weeks, it's going to be interesting. So we'll see, you know, just going to have to bear with us. It's it's not going to be the same schedule because we're going to be doing a million different things. Uh, I definitely wanted to get an episode in this week for you guys and explain to you. That's why we're, we're releasing this on, on Wednesday uh, because it should have come out in the trades either yesterday or today. Um, and I wanted to, uh, I had the, the conversation I had with George Karloftis uh, in the can, and I wanted you guys to hear that because I really enjoyed that. That was cool. Um, so... That's what's happening. It's very exciting, you know. Um, it, it's 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 I I am I'm, I'm not I haven't been this happy in a very long time. Yeah, and and we appreciate everybody that um, is supporting that wants to support. We've you know saw the comments on social media. The only thing I'm gonna ask is when we all merge together is. Let's be a little nice to the new people coming in, meeting us, because y'all know sometimes y'all get a little testy on the social media pages. Be spicy. <laughs> so let's just be like nice that. to each other. Talking to you, Thomas Parrish. <laughs> yes, let's be nice. Talking to you, Jordan <laughs> Barris Ford. Be nice. <laughs> talking to you, Megan Pollard. <laughs> <laughs> Who else am I talking? Oh, I'm talking to you, Michael Davis. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 
That's all I'm asking. There's another Michael in there too. There's <laughs> another Michael. I can't remember. Talking his last to you, name. other Michael. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, we're like we live in a cool time now, though. Where before, if a radio station or if a radio show left, you were just they were out of your lives. That's but it. now, it, you know, with you know the internet and and streaming and everything, it's cool that you know, listeners from Florida or Georgia or Omaha or wherever can still follow you guys yeah. content. You can do it from wherever now. So that that's really, you know, something to look forward to. Yeah. It, and, and radio needs more of that attitude of embracing social media, embracing podcasting, embracing the digital element, because it's, you know, that's why radio will die. A radio station will die. A company will die if they, have the same mentality that they had back in the 90s that we're the only game in town. No one's going to, you know, there's nothing else out there. If it is, we're just going to ignore it and we're not going to participate. Thank God we're in a situation that that's not the case by no stretch of the imagination. Actually, Odyssey just redid their app where it allows us to post something for the post show if we want to do it, Mm -hmm. Um, which is just like all these little cool little neat tricks and and, and, and and add-ons and things that they have to do. So I, I just have to figure out, and, and I hope, see, you guys that, that have made this podcast and that especially the ones that followed us from the radio show and have stuck with us, like, you have no idea how much I'm appreciative of you guys. Like, how much I, I there's I couldn't have got to where we are here right now without mm-hmm. you guys. Absolutely. Because this podcast played a huge role in this job uh, because of what we accomplished this past year. We did things no other podcast was doing in the, in the world, Mm -hmm. you know, the events and all that other kind of stuff. I mean, there are podcasts that do stuff like that, but the the way that we were doing these things, we were different. And the content we were putting out. Right. I'm not saying it's dead. It's just, I have to find a way to transition that and morph it into what we're doing. And if you guys can Give me some leniency and bear with me and, and just support what we're doing and, and know that I'll always have you guys in mind. Um, I'll make it work, but I just don't know how to do it right now because I don't know the tools that I'm going to be working with. Right. That's still. all. And, and, but once I do it, you know, Nate's still on board. Like for people are going like, well, I, I want to listen to the show, but I don't listen to this fucking guy. I want to listen to Nate, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> well, the pot, like there's going to be aspects of the podcast that Nate will still be a part of, you know, like, there, there's no heat here at all. Um, so, like, as we transition and might not be able to give you as much content as we did before, Nate and his wife are going to do uh, a full episode of the Mexico Moment. Oh, okay. Yeah, which is cool because he's got tons of stuff that he does. Like, uh, like They do a lot over there. So I want to listen to that dope. because of all the stuff that they do. He's mm-hmm. exhausting. Uh, it's, it's, it is. It's awesome. He's like a travel channel. He's, yeah, he's supposed to be out just enjoying life, and then there's all this work. It's itineraries and all this stuff. Uh, and then Brandon will continue to have uh, the Clueless 2 thing, I guess. Right? I don't know. I haven't talked to him in a while. Have you talked to him, Nate? Is he alive? Is he fine? Yeah. Yeah, I think he's alive. He's working. He, he, le- he said he learned how to golf, so he's been doing some golfing. I've only been gone for two weeks. <laughs> yeah, feels like well, he don't he, learn how to golf Woods. for two weeks. He's a Tiger Woods and Noonan. Brandon does. <laughs> Is he still having those girls on that show? I, I read some comments on that. It was bad, uh, bad move. Yeah. He, he's, no, I, uh, oh, you you nixed it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Attaboy. 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 <laughs> Good Attaboy. man. Attaboy. Attaboy. All right. Uh, so that's going to – I think I've explained everything that, that I uh, – yeah. Uh, yep. Oh, we've got to do a Mexico moment. Shit, yep. we haven't even got to a Mexico moment yet. We've been sitting there yapping. No, it's all good. Uh, uh, all right. Well, you want to do a kind of a condensed one, and then we'll do some bonus stuff. So here we go. Yeah, we'll arriba, arriba. And now a Mexico moment with Nate. <laughs> all right. Go ahead. Uh, Mexico moment with Nate brought to you by Inspect All Pest Services. Inspect All Pest Services provides high-quality termite, pest, and wildlife control. But that's not all they do. Inspect All can take care of your insulation, pressure washing, gutter maintenance, and other home services in the metro Atlanta and surrounding region. Uh, and now you can mention the BS and get 10% off. You re- you can reach them at 770-483-2420. That's 770-483-2420. Nice. All right. What do you got? 
Um, so this is when uh, my parents were in town uh, visiting us, and we they wanted their last day. They wanted to go over to the island of Cozumel, and uh, you guys have all been there. Well, I don't know. Actually, Nelson, have you been to Mexico before? No, you're you're on my bucket list, man. Ever since you and Alexis moved down there, I just wanted to like uh, uh, just get there, and I just haven't been able to yet. Yeah, well, maybe you guys all come down sometime. Do a, you know, you could write it off. It'll be some kind of, you Ooh. know, work trip. <laughs> maybe. Oh, oh they, they're already planning work trips for us, yes. like in it's crazy Hawaii, Hawaii and Tahoe and Reno and Vail. Ve- <laughs> so, yeah. Let me add Mexico. Just I can okay. add it. That's fine. Please. Go ahead, continue. Well, 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 hopefully they can figure out how to tax you. But, um, yeah, if you guys come <laughs> down, um, Nelson will take you over to the island of Cozumel. Love that. Uh, but so you take a ferry over there. It's maybe about 45 minute ride and it's fairly easy. You just go from the channel between like the mainland of Mexico into, you know, the island of Cozumel. So we uh, we take it over and it's been windy like the last few weeks here. So we take it over. It was actually pretty rough um, or the roughest I've ever you know been on the ferry before. And my dad gets kind of seasick and, Ooh. you know, I've roller coasters and shit like that. So he took some Dramamine and seemed to be fine. But anyway, so we rent a car, we go around the island, um, go to the backside, but this is their last night. So we we're planning on getting a nice dinner when we get to, back to Playa del Carmen. Uh, and so we were trying to take the 6 p.m. ferry. So we, I drop them off at the, the port. There's a lot of people there. There's a big, long line. So I, I'm like, well, you guys get in line. I'm going to go return the car. So I drop them off. They get in line. And I go return the car. And so it's yeah, f- about 530. And I realize when I get up there, it's not just like a line for tickets or security or whatever. Like, there's gates across like the pier, like they're not letting people in there. So I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And I get a message from our friend that lives on Cozumel that who is in was in Playa del Carmen that day. And she says, Hey, uh, just to let you know, the, um, the, like, I guess it would be the Marines or the Coast Guard, the Coast Guard just said that they are shutting down the ports and there will be no more, um, ferries tonight, like till tomorrow. Wow. So we're like, what the fuck do we do? So there's, I mean, it's literally like there's hundreds of people just standing out there. Uh, And so we're like, okay, well, I guess the six o'clock one ain't happening. So we go over and try to figure out what to do. Um, Go, go to this bar, get a drink. And it's kind of, it's up on the second level so we can see. So hold on. They they did, they did that because of the weather, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we find out it's because the, the, the seas were too rough and they didn't feel comfortable putting people on there. But where we were, it was super calm um, because, you know, the, the weather kind of goes around the Island. um, So we're kind of, in the on the inside of it so we're not getting in it we're, we're like blocked by the other side of the island please so tell we're me, not really please, seen please tell me the story ends with all of you swimming back <laughs> <laughs> well uh so i'm telling my dad and i don't know i mean you guys know my dad he's uh he's a planner and he's always thinking about three steps ahead what what's the worst possible situation let me bring everything with just in case you know i need uh you know a, a, a german um uh, dictionary for some reason. I don't know, just weird shit he brings. <laughs> and, uh, so, so I'm telling him like, dad, like all these people are trying to get on the ferry. If it's shut down tonight, we need to find a place to stay. Cause there's only so many places on this Island. Um, and, uh, so I'm starting to look at Airbnbs and he's not doing anything. He's just sitting there very calm. And I'm like, <laughs> Bro, this is time for your uh, your planning this to kick in and let's do something. And uh, so I'm like, there's one Airbnb and it's 55 bucks. I'm, and I was like, bro, it was like, we got to stay. We're going to have to stay here tonight. We need to get this. And he's like, well, let's just see. Like, let's just see what happens. I'm like, what do we do? And we're going to be sleeping on the streets. And we're sitting up there and it was our, our ferry was supposed to be at 8 p.m. It's about 930 at this point. And we see all these people running like the day after tomorrow and it's, they're just running to it. They'd open the gates and they were letting one ferry go at like nine 30. So we, we book it down there. We get through the crowd. We'd already bought our tickets online. So we didn't have to wait for tickets or to, to buy a ticket or anything. And we get on the last fucking boat and just make it home. We didn't get home to like 11 or something. <laughs> so you did get back though. They, yeah, they, yeah, we finally up, yeah. got back, but we yeah. almost got stranded on this island. So that um, winter storm, you had back-to-back winter storms. You had what Olive and Piper, and then it, it's it was historical, right? With the snow that there's still houses under twenty plus feet of snow in Northern California. 
Uh, like you look at the Hollywood sign and behind it, we got stuck in the first wave in Flagstaff. Mm-hmm. Did you, uh, radio personality Corey Fitz, uh, you guys know Corey, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, or Fitz. Mm-hmm. Okay, so he lives in Texas, and he made the news. He got stuck in that big Texas tornado. And he he's rolling tape, and he's like, the, he sees the tornado to the left, and he's like, shaking and sweating he's in his truck and he's just trying to outrun it it was really trippy go to his social media you'll see it i didn't realize it was fitz when you were looking at that the other day that that's what you were talking yeah. about yeah and you want to talk about a giant of a man he's about the only one to be safe in a tornado because he's about seven feet tall like a redwood yes <laughs> his head would stick out the top <laughs> yeah it's like peeking out the top of the truck like- he'd use it like a hula hoop <laughs> 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 woo, woo, woo. he'd look like the iowa state logo yes, exactly. sticking out of that tornado yeah so the 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 winds that you're talking about, like every like we experienced it driving across. Uh, as soon as we got, I think into like Oklahoma, uh, that you we were getting twenty to thirty mile per hour gusts, and the farther west that we went, they would pick up. So there are some like when the elevation got up to five, six, seven thousand feet, they're like, be careful, you could get up to seventy mile per hour gust. By the way, that's a, a hurricane. Gust. I mean, oh. yeah, tropical storm is, I think, 42. Sustained. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's got to be sustained 70. So when we're driving over here, um, I kind of got a lay of the land before with uh, one of my big, big bosses who's out of Dallas that I met in Vegas when he was out there. But uh, he was, he, he mem- he'd been, done the trip once, and he memorized it. It was perfect, too. He memorized it to a T. And he was like, yeah, it's like the only tricky part. He's like, you just got to be worried. Before, right? If, once you get to Bakersfield, you'll be fine. But those mountains in between, it's going to be a little overwhelming because it's so big and wide and you'll see cars underneath of you. And then the elevation goes up and the, w- the weather changes. And I'm like, I'm terrified. I'm going, what am I driving into right now? <laughs> but the winds that Nate's talking about, when you get to like 7,000 feet elevation, and, I mean, it's not like you're on the edge of a mountain or anything, but still, you're on a mountain. And those are blowing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you pull a little leather in is you what you're saying. Nervous. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I was terrified. I'm sitting there white knuckling the whole time oh, trying yeah. to be cool. Rach knew it. She knew, was, she knew I was worried. She knew I was worried. I would have been worried if I was her. Well, no. luckily, they were Which, only going 35 miles an hour, so they'd be okay. <laughs> it's not like they were worried about crashing into anything. That's true. We were. Let's probably do it. They, they, they named the storms, like the snowstorms? Yeah. All, it was Olive and Piper. Uh, I thought they only named good. hurricanes. Yeah, me too. I didn't know that. Yeah, no, they name I mean, everything, everything nowadays. Yeah. And they're named after like aspiring actresses in LA. Well, they're also really annoying <laughs> white girls, aren't they? Snowstorms, Oliver and by Olive and Piper. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, the we we got rain last night. Do you guys see my truck? No. That know. was that was that was rainstorm Randall. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? What's on your truck? It rained? Rain, yeah, rainstorm Randall. Yeah. Came through already night. down to the R's. Oh, about, about twenty <laughs> minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, I think in three days we're gonna have another rainstorm. What is it gonna be called? Stefan. Oh, okay. Stefan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that actually will be glowing. That one at the end of it, you'll yeah. be glowing when you're done. All right, let me give you a reminder. We'll get your bonus content for you, premium two percenters, and we'll get back to uh, we have safe words. All right, so we'll explain the safe word. You get to know Nelson a little bit more, other than the conversation we just had. So. Bear with us. Be patient. Please be supportive. Continue to support. Uh, reach out and start to follow some of the other social media stuff. Uh, it's the BS. You'll see the BS purple logo. It's just on Instagram and it's just on Facebook. So it's just those other two. But especially the Instagram, I need to get uh, you guys over there as well. So yes, follow, 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 follow. Oh, like also another thing that we're doing is. Uh, I've had Buddy, our video guy, upload like 60 interviews, just the interviews that we've done over this past year plus on YouTube. So they are now available, free of charge, of course, mm-hmm. uh, for the interviews, the, the visual of the interviews. So and I know, we know y'all want to go see those interviews. Right, right, right. Don't rush over the YouTube. Yeah. Um, and I know Nate has pulled some uh, of just the interviews as well that we're going to, I think, move over to the new RSS feed when we can. So that'll be cool. So anyway, we're working on it. Podcastthebs.com. 
That's the website. Oh, you know, I did. I just bought thebaileyshow.com. Can you do something with that, Nate? Can you, like, I mean, because it's easy just to redirect things to it, right? Can you just redirect it to, I guess, jasonbailey.com or podcastthebs.com maybe? Yeah, or are you guys getting a new site for yeah, that's the show? one thing that's kind of the jury's out. We don't yeah, know how that works yet. Okay. I, I think well, they, maybe we wait, and I can just forward that to wherever, whatever the new situation is. Oh yes, that would make sense. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we can do that, and they'll still we can still they'll still get credit and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay, perfect, excellent. All right, uh, all right. Podcastthebs.com. All of our social media. Please stay up to speed. I will update you guys uh, with any new information now that the information is out, and I can talk about it. You know where we're at. We will start posting all the cool stuff that we're doing. Hopefully, you'll come along for the ride. If you're ever out in the area, you've got friends. So just let us know. We'll meet up. We'll take you out. We'll get a beer. We'll have a two percenters, even if it's just me and you. We'll go out. We'll have a beer. All right? So you got friends out here now. Uh, All right. With that being said, Nate, you got anything before we get out and get into the bonus content for the two percenters? Premium two percenters. Super happy for you guys. I'm excited. Um, and you guys all deserve it. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you Nikki. You got a friend in me. That's you it. got a friend in me. That's it? Yeah. Okay. That's, that's what I want to that, say. That's you singing. Because I like it. Yeah. That's bad, though. No, it's not. It's not good. I think it sounded good. I I sing and rap. You no, you don't rap. I, you make up some songs mm-hmm. that are kind of good sometimes. You <laughs> definitely don't rap. That's Word, praise. boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's praise. Uh, Nelson, I just want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to to Nate for the headhunt. I'll send you a nice gift. You you and the lovely wife of yours. I want to say uh, thank you to Nikki because you could have easily just been real shady to me, and you've been you've really embraced me since thank I came you. here, and and uh, never forget me, man. Thanks to you, dude. Yeah. Since that moment I met you down in Orlando or Miami, wherever the hell Miami. we were. 15 yeah. years ago. Yeah, just louder than life. I saw you and Nate, and I said, these two guys are going to be some of the closest friends I have for the rest of my life. So I appreciate you uh, putting your faith in me and inviting me out here to Sacramento. One thing some people, some people can't say about me is if you're loyal and you don't stab me in the back, I'll do whatever I can to take care of you. Oh, my mom gave me a whole lecture the other day. I'm like, lady, relax. You, I told you, just stick with Bailey. Uh-huh. I'm like, mom, <laughs> chill. There's, there's an, <laughs> I guarantee there's another woman out there that is saying those exact same words to somebody. <laughs> All right. Uh, with that being said, as always, and I mean this more than I've ever said it before, thanks so much for the support. We appreciate you listening. We'll definitely talk soon and keep you updated. All right. Uh, stick around, you premium 2 percenters, for the bonus stuff. Bye. Get off my lawn. It's old man Kevin, and the BS is done for right now. Please share, like, and support podcastthebs.com. It's better than radio. Now, get out of here. All right, here's your bonus content, you premium two percenters. Thanks for continuing to subscribe. That'll be something else we'll have to uh, have a discussion about with subscriptions moving forward. Anyway, that's for another day. Bonus content, uh, now that we're out in Sacramento... For those of you that don't know Nelson, I guess we probably should have said this in before, but Nelson and I and I have known each other for fi- about 15 years. Mm-hmm. So I think when you first got into the business, I met you at uh, boot camp. Yeah, it was my first gig producing a morning show in in uh, Omaha. Right. And then somebody said, hey, you should come out to this morning show boot camp. And I said, I'm going. Paid my ticket, went down there. I just wanted to be immersed in, in the business. And that's where I met you guys, uh, down when you were on Real Radio. Yeah, and Nate was with us at the time. I think he had just got hired. Like, either he was your intern and you had just put him on, or he was still at Full Sail when I met him. Were you at Full Sail? Yeah, I was at... No, no, I was uh, UCF, but yeah, I was an intern at the time. I didn't mean Full Sail, UCF. You were an intern and went, and was that the year with the uh, that Tim guy being a douche that year? Was that that same year? Yeah, you, me, and Bull drove down to Miami, and then we all... I think four of us stayed in one room. I was going to say, there were a bunch of you guys in one room. <laughs> that was, the, that was the, 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 the trip where there's a picture of me and Eric Harding, the uh, little guy. Yeah. So we're yep. both flexing. 
And I think I had just lost some weight or something, and I was getting there. And then I had an intern that went rogue, and he was there talking shit behind my back to my peers that I've known for gazillion years trying to get jobs. Yeah, this guy was wow. bad. This guy was dirty. Yeah. You know, I never thought about it. Yeah, I was sleeping on the floor, and I remember going and hanging out in, in Nelson's room with Prince, uh-huh. and and you had, like, a, a suite, I think. I was like, shit, I should have asked to stay on your floor. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. And I, I didn't do anything special because I guarantee you I picked the cheapest room rate that they had, but I just had, like, a really good room. <laughs> so that's where I met Nelson, and I've just always stayed in contact with him and – um, tried to hire him a couple times. It didn't work out for mm-hmm. whatever reason. That's the tricky thing about radio is it's all about timing, you know, and I, I've been, I think either I've adjusted well or, or been willing to adjust, like not, you know, not expecting it, but just being a willing to adjust. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, it's, it's all about timing, you know, contracts and, and, and whatnot. I, I will also say this, and I probably should have mentioned this in, in the normal content, but during this last year, there had been a couple opportunities out there, um, for, to go back to radio and, and I, I didn't want to go, I, I didn't explore those, uh, said no to one of them, uh, just because I, I wasn't ready to go back. And I did, I said to myself, I wasn't going to go back to a bad situation just for a paycheck, just for a job. Wasn't happening. I've done this for too long. I've gotten to a point of my career and my, uh, in my life where I'm just not going to deal with it anymore. If it weren't for the people in the company that we're working for right now, I would have not taken this job. They're just phenomenal. They are. And I want one of the first conversations that I had with them, you know, a while back was I, I'm not, I'm not going to do this unless I can pick my own show because the last thing I want is to start a show that there's no chemistry. That's right. the worst feeling in the world. You know, the, 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 what you want to accomplish on a radio show the first day is to say or have people say, it sounds like you guys have been together for years. Yes. Well, for, for us, we have been, right? <laughs> you know, so, so that, that's, that's, that's what you want. You don't want to walk away, and I've been in both situations where they go, you know, it was an okay first day, um, but, you know, it was the first day. We got plenty of time. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys will get your chemistry. You'll get there. You'll get there. You don't want that because if you don't get there, because right now it's just negative. Mm -hmm. You know, you're you're, you're battling uphill. So I said, I'm not going to do this. I won't take this job unless, not, not that I'm special or anything, but for when they offered it to me, I said, I'm not going to do it unless I can pick my team. And I picked my team. It was great. Uh, so anyway, Nelson was a guy that I wanted to work with for a very long time. Uh, obviously, I offered the job to Nate first because he's, you know, he's my guy. Mm-hmm. But Nate's in Mexico, so Nelson comes along. Thank God for Nate. Thank God for Mexico. Thank God for Nate. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Love you, buddy. Nate, Mexico's you your too. favorite state now, right? <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> It is actually so. So Nelson, when I call him, he's uh, he, he he says the first words out of his mouth were, "What state and when are we going?" Right, and I was like, <laughs> "No hesitation." That that's what I wanted. You know, I didn't want the dilly dally and of I don't know. Let me think about it. You know, mm-hmm. I want I'm in. And so when I said that, I was like, "This is going to be easy. This is going to be great." I, I talk to Nelson every blue moon, and it's usually business-related. It's mm-hmm. never just bullshitting. So I don't know, Nelson, the ins and outs, the quirks, the idiosyncrasies and all that stuff. I'll learn that as we move forward. Mm-hmm. I knew he was loud. We're learning a lot already, though. I, I knew <laughs> Nelson was loud. That's part of his charm, right? Mm-hmm. Because he's he, he's boisterous. He stay, he's the bull in the china shop. You yes. know, He's all that stuff. I didn't know he was uncontrollably (laughs) unfiltered loud. That also is true. That I did not know. So, you know what I mean by that, Nate? When uh, uncontrollably, unfiltered,ly loud, filteredly, is that a word? Loud? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not just, it's not like he's yelling. He's just, that's just his personality. That's who he is. He's just, he's a loud speaker. Yeah, he. But what he means by unfilteredly loud is that he going to say whatever he going to say, 
loud. So he's going to curse loud. He's going <laughs> to do his lingo loud. <laughs> he's going to tell his personal business loud. He's going to mm-hmm. do everything loud. Like, yeah. he don't whisper at all. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, is, look, I can read people. I know people. And I know why people tick. Mm-hmm. He doesn't know what he's saying half the time. <laughs> it, it's It's like... You wind them up and you let them go, <laughs> and 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 it's it just uh, that damn energizer bunny just mm-hmm. doesn't stop, and so uh, I I don't want to be rude, you know, but there have been some awkward moments, and it's my job to step in and kind of, you know, say, hey, look, we got to work on this, and you know, a little rough here, and you know, and, and play the manager. You know, I've, I've been been in this role before, just a matter if he's going to listen or not, and which I think he will. And, and so we got to we got to a point where he's you know I don't like the loud cussing in public you know mm-hmm. it's like one of my biggest things and and especially around kids and we're at this restaurant and you know he's <laughs> fucking shit and fuck you know we're at the office you know we're at this radio station and like like I told you before it's very communal where everything is open so mm-hmm. salespeople are on they don't have their own office they're on the phone fucking shit and fucking shit and fucking shit and fucking shit I'm like. He, you know, so it's it's tough. It's that movie experience, right? Where somebody's talking. It's tough to approach somebody, even if you're friends with them mm-hmm. and know. Them, say, hey, man, you got to keep it down, because it's like two adults. You don't say that to another right. adult, right? And when you start to tell somebody that they're acting out of pocket, a lot of times a guy is going to react negatively. Sure, of course. I've been loud and too much for a long time, though. I've gotten desensitized of people telling me when I'm too much. <laughs> so we've come up with a solution. Mm-hmm. Yes. We have a safe word. We do. And I have a safe touch. Uh, oh, you, you do? do? It's very surprising because yeah. I'm not a, I'm a don't touch me guy. So but am I. Wasn't, I. But I wasn't put off by that, and it was like, okay, she just let me know I'm just going a little too wild. Mm-hmm. I didn't know you had a safe touch. She does. I showed it to you. What is it? I just gently. I don't remember. She's gonna give me one of these. She just goes, "Hey, just right? so, so okay. not to embarrass That's him in front so of firm. people. That's so firm, you're not even flexing. So that people don't even know. I'm telling him, like, <laughs> be quiet. Oh my um, God! And it worked. Like you a, lucky dog. I, know. I can't believe it. <laughs> what do I have to do to get a safe touch? You gotta be too much. Do you also replace windshields? <laughs> no. well, that's safe light. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, but safe touch is a security system. Safe touch security. I knew there's a safe <laughs> touch out there. <laughs> wow, I didn't know that you had the stroker going on. Yeah, so the I did stroker. it at the station when he's sitting next to me, and he's like, ah, and we were sitting out on the couches. I just. His arm. Oh, would you rather me touch you or say things to you? I think I'd rather you say things to me. But I don't know. Maybe we could try touching and work from there. Okay, I'm open. I, I, this is all a whole new. I, I had no idea this was going on. I didn't know there was another option out there. I, I didn't thought it either. was all just strictly. <laughs> words. I discovered it with her. Like, okay, this is the first time. <laughs> if he gets too loud, you play tummy sticks. Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you calm your friend down? Right. I poke him with my penis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Works every time. And he remembers. He really does learn. <laughs> you should try it with your dogs. Right. <laughs> <laughs> try it with your kids. Just don't let anybody see you. Right. <laughs> so the, the safe word, Nate, would you like to guess what it is? Oh, okay. you're, so you're, not gonna guess, you're, you're not you going to you're not going to guess it, but I'm curious to see what you would say. Uh, so you'd say it what like in a public setting where there's uh-huh. people and he's getting a little too loud. Yeah. Um, it can be said discreetly. They don't have to yell it. They can just hey, this temp, this tone, this is a safe word, and I'll, and it resonates. Okay, maybe. And it'll These cut. pretzels are making me thirsty. Thirsty. <laughs> I like that. Wait, is, 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 is that the whole safe word? These pretzels are making me thirsty or uh, yeah. thirsty? Well, I figured it has to be something that you can say in public where it's not like, why is he saying banana peel ran- randomly? Like, that would be weird. So you'd think it would be something that would be commonly, uncommonly said. <laughs> no, it's more like banana peel. It's more like a, you just yeah. say it out loud and then we move okay. on. It's more like, but yeah, it's more like banana peel. Okay. Well, I would say banana peel or maybe squirrel. Squirrel. Squirrel's no, originally it was muskrat, mm-hmm. like in Meet the Parents. Okay. Um, but we've changed it, and, and he came up with his own safe word, actually. Yeah. And Ooh. and I was like, well, if you're going to remember this, then great. And I guess it's a it's a touchy word for him. It's a buzzword. It doesn't mm-hmm. sit well with him. No. Uh, and it's Denver. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And let me tell you, <laughs> okay. we are out yesterday, and he gets loud, and, and Jason's like, Denver, Denver, Denver. <laughs> 
<laughs> you only gotta say I the one time. I don't think that's how you do the safe <laughs> word. Not not safe. Safe. He's like Diver, Diver, Diver. <laughs> it's, it's like pushing the button. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> See, I picture you being at a restaurant, being like, Nelson, would you like the Denver omelet? <laughs> no, that was not. It. That was not how. Denver, we got a code Denver. Denver, Denver, Bob Denver, code yeah. Denver. <laughs> No, it's just Denver. It's just Denver. I was cracking up. Do you want to explain That's why Denver? Briefly, briefly. So I'm divorced now, but at the time I was not divorced, and my then wife was pregnant with our second child, Roman. Uh, and I went to visit some buddies. The only NBA game I ever went to. I got treated the whole star style and all that, right? And I got wasted, just belligerently. So you imagine me loud when I'm at my loudest. Now I'm an uncontrolled drunk loud. Okay, mm. okay. and I was too much. And it, it almost cost me, at that point, the marriage. Like, she had every reason she could have left. Not to bring everybody down, but she could have, right? Mm-hmm. So from that moment forward, I was on the P's and Q's. I was on the, okay, I just yes, ma'am, how can I make, what can I get for you? How can I be a better husband? All of that. And so we came to the point where the, uh, we, I realized that when I get too drunk, you can't tell me anything. Not that you can tell me anything now, you know, normal. But when I'm drunk, you definitely can't. And for whatever reason, it was such a traumatizing event for her. I had only given her the word. I said, if you say Denver, I'll respect whatever you say, and I'll do whatever you want in the moment. It'll deprogram me. It'll take me down from my, you can't tell me nothing, all of that, and it always worked. But now she's my ex-wife, so I'll give it to you guys. I don't <laughs> respect the same power. We, we've, 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 we've adopted the, the Denver. Uh-huh. Denver. It this- works, man. I never thought it would, but it does. Wait, wait. I'm, I'm still confused with the Denver. Were they playing like the Denver Nuggets or no, something? We were or in, we're, so I guess I didn't finish that. We were in Denver. So not only are we, am I wasted and she is sober and pregnant with our child, but we're in a city eight hours away from anyone we know. But you're at a basketball game, uh-huh. the Denver Nuggets basketball. Yes, yeah, so I was at the, yeah, we were at That's the Nuggets, yeah. And then I went outside and I took a uh, orange cone that was, I don't know, construction. And I was holding it above my head. And she said, you know, please, Nelson, please stop. You're going to you're gonna get the cops called. Let him effing arrest me. Like I was like the training day. King Kong <laughs> ain't got nothing on me. I'm standing spinning in a parking lot out in public I have in Denver. You in your head. She should have. Okay. Oh my goodness. She should have. She she should have killed me. Last opportunity to come work here. <laughs> Denver. And I'm going to give you a hundred thousand dollars on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> Muskrat. <laughs> Banana peel. <laughs> So yeah. I know what's going through Nate's mind right now. He's going, holy shit, Jason is so excited. He's got that project right next to him. Uh-huh. <laughs> he is going to have a field day with that guy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> he will mold you. Yeah. I'll let yeah. it. You know what? I was not ever in a position where I would let that happen. I am now. At, you know, 41, I'm just doing things different. So, so like, if you were to get, first of all, we don't get that drunk ever, mm-hmm. okay, because only bad things happen. Um, when you, if you were to, and you get belligerent mm-hmm. and you, you say you're, no one can stop you in control. Right. I found a way that if you, you can use a nightstick or, 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 um, Taser. an ass, but just to shoot somebody in their kneecaps, mm-hmm. <laughs> they usually learn and they, they sober up pretty quickly. Can you just say kneecap before you shoot me there? Cause I got a weird thing about my knees anyway. Okay, well, you shoot me in the thigh meat. No, nope, like it's got to uh, be in the knee so it explodes. Yeah, so no, I'm, I've done just... that only twice, and both times those guys learned. Gotta... <laughs> it makes my knees hurt just thinking about it. Now, as I had mentioned at the beginning of this episode, uh, that we would talk about the Nelson and get to know him a little bit better mm-hmm. and have a safe word and why we have a safe word and. This is just the beginning of all these things. I then came up with the idea uh, of maybe having one for Nikki because you have a little of that. Well, you do have, you know, you have that in you and it's, it's negative. We live in a very positive city right now. (laughs) It's negative. The only thing that I will give you that even, even my own friends do have with me is I can't always control my facial expressions. I will give you that. Yeah, and they're ugly. I don't know what they look like. They're That's not pretty. I always say they're I don't know what pretty. they look like. So not I will pretty. give you if I'm looking a little crazy or something and I don't recognize mm-hmm. it. Okay. But mm-hmm. this other thing you're talking about, I don't even know what that is. What? the? Psst. Yeah. The, oh, it'll cut like a knife. That, I watched it. So it's uh, it's it's ba- the psst. 
when I do that, it's Tiffany Haddish in, in uh, <laughs> in night, girl's trip? Night, night School. Oh, Night School. You know, when she's next to Kevin Hart and yeah. and she's like, Ma, hold on. I got this black leprechaun next to me. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> and uh, and they're arguing back and forth. And she goes, Psst. And he goes, Psst. And he, Psst. <laughs> so whenever I do the oh you've got that going on it's the Tiffany Haddish. Oh, okay. So you've you you've you got like you did that at breakfast the other day that place that we waited like an hour to go get <laughs> into. You know you ordered your little I clean my comb thing and blue. Liquid. Yeah, it was a blue mimosa. Yeah, whatever. Uh, see, but the thing he's not picking up on that. And if I could save you in just this one situation, okay, he does have it right. You gave the face, okay, but you weren't giving it to old boy taking the order. You were giving it to our boss and him because no one was listening to the fact that you was getting a mimosa. Then everyone turned to you like, "Oh, you're not getting a mimosa," and she goes, Psst, "I'm getting the blue cone mimosa." <laughs> I think so just, that was to you guys is who that was aimed at. I think you just made that story up because she looks confused. Like No, I I had already picked my mimosa out. I already knew what I was getting. I knew the name of it. I was already ready. Tell me I'm wrong. We all looked at you like, what, you ain't getting a mimosa? She said, yeah. well, I'm getting a mimosa. That is what but it was, was the way you ordered. Is like, you don't read minds? <laughs> no, it's because you guys have this thing where when y'all go out, every because they pay for everything, so they try to do this community ordering. I'm not a community ordering type. I want my own stuff. I eat what I eat. I don't want you to order my stuff for me. So that was probably oh, the, I don't want you to nice. order me a prosecco with That's, grapefruit, and I don't want that. So I know what this I want. is oh, this is interesting. She's never been to a add-on restaurant. Like you've never been to a nice restaurant where you have you you share sides, right? Group no, sides I have been stuff. to a restaurant where you share sides. I well, went we to went SCK. to we went to the steakhouse the other night at uh, Sky River Valley, and I was like, "Can you pass me the potato?" No. The thing is, my like, potato, oh, El Rotten. No, 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 no. Like, they're thing, sides, Nikki. I ordered them because yes. nobody else ordered a side. So in my mind, they didn't order nothing but some meat. So I'm like, well, they must not want sides. I, I oh, know about sharing, but they didn't gonna... order anything. So I'm like, you well, they must not want thing. it. So I order it, <laughs> and then everybody's like, pass me this and pass. I'm like. Yeah. Y'all didn't order one thing. You sweet thing. Is that why you said that about the Brussels sprouts? Yes. Yeah. She's I didn't even pick up I on really it. wanted. She them. was prison eating. She's like, <laughs> it's my food. Like this is crazy. Yeah, it's like a fist. So for, first off, that's how that works. Okay. It's it's a. Y'all didn't even know what I it's, ordered. It's a share thing. We didn't order sides because everybody heard you already order sides. Yeah, we figured. That's you how were that so works. Aaron said that you guys didn't hear me. No, we we heard you. We saw. I actually asked. I said, "Did anyone order sides?" And Rach goes, "Yeah, Nikki did." Yeah. Oh well, yeah, I know so we Rach took, heard me, but everybody else acted like they didn't. So we I'm figured like, you just took over for the table. No. Well, the <laughs> second off, you're not paying for the stuff. So even if Aaron, our boss, reached over and says, "Hey, I want a bite of your meat," right. You give it to him. I yeah. share. You you act like I don't share. You I don't. Share. You just admit it. You're like I don't know how to share. When I go out, with my friends, we all take a carpet square. We go into a corner, and we bring our own box <laughs> lunch. And some as my friend came over and won a French fry, and I kicked the shit out of her. Right. You know, no. <laughs> it reminds me of when I was in D Block. <laughs> the Nikki D Block. <laughs> That's how I got to my be name. Fair, <laughs> to be fair, you usually share appetizers, not sides. But now, um, no, no, like no, 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 no. Hasn't gone to a fancy restaurant either. It's communal sides. It's com that's how it works. You don't you don't get a side. Right. The sides are made to order to share. That's the, these steakhouse. It's usually steakhouses, but they're they're made to order to share. They're huge but, Nate, sides. They're made to order to share with two, maybe three people. It was five of us. One side was not really meant for five people to eat. That's another and thing. Nobody else ordered it, but, so it was only what I ordered. When you go out to these types of places, I know this is all new to you guys. Not to sound like an elitist here, but it it it's not like the Golden Corral where you just slop the green and slop the pink as much as you yeah, want. I you know. eat five bites, and you go. You have a little. You have a little bit. You have a little bit of food. You don't have globs of food. It's not Thanksgiving dinner where you fill it up and it's five feet tall. You have little, it's it's just a different world. Well, and the steak is doing the heavy lifting at that point. Of course it is. Like the you're steak coming is, for the steak. And you've, we've had appetizers and drinks and you just have to, it's a different type of eating. It's not like what you do. Listen, I shared all of my size. Hood rats. I just really Friends. like Bristle sprouts. So I knew I wanted a little extra green with my meat. Oh, I felt like I had taken one too many sprouts. 
Yeah. That's what I said. Well, I had tried the Brussels sprouts. She goes, yeah, my Brussels sprouts. <laughs> Everything's hers. I go, damn, I didn't know. Like, I, like, she ordered them special. Like, I haven't seen you take your card out once. What God, are you talking about? Good. Yours. I did the alligator <laughs> arm the other day. I did, pay for, I did pay for dinner last night. Oh, that was nice. I did. I paid for dinner. I was like, I, I'm going to pay for dinner let one me. day in a week mm-hmm. when I get a check. I'm not buying you dinner. I bought her dinner no, because I'm I didn't know buy, before I'm that she was on. I bought you guys dinner the other day. Yeah. You yeah. bought thank us you a lot of stuff. And I, this Airbnb. Where'd you guys go? Thank you every you time. I'm very grateful. Mexican, I think. Lorenzo's. Uh, with all due respect, I'd rather you not buy me dinner because I don't want you to take my food away. I'm not going to take your <laughs> food away. <laughs> I want to buy you dinner okay. to say thank you. I, I appreciate I, you. I, I, I get my drink and she's going to swipe it from me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm okay. not. Such an That tea looked good, didn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even have sweet tea. <laughs> big time, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to and order the most expensive. That's the other thing. Is like you know you're not paying for it. These guys are order. Yeah, can I get the uh, 88 ounce steak, please? <laughs> no. <laughs> Just I bring ordered- me the cow uh, and a fork and a, and a lighter, please. I ordered the cheapest steak there. It just was the biggest one, but it was definitely the cheapest <laughs> one. Steak. Well, that's why I leaned it over was to the him. the cheapest one on the menu. He was talking trash, but I leaned over to him. I said, look. He I'm, did. I'm, I go, I'm pretty sure I'm not paying for this. I will. I'll pay for my meal. But if I'm not, I go, does this make me an asshole if I order this one right here? Not that one. This one. He's like, no, I don't, I don't think so. I'm like, look, it make me look bad. It's gonna make you look bad if I come off like an asshole. So I'm just trying to save us both. And then I get the little fillet, and With he's like, "Son of a bitch!" <laughs> oh, this, this mother. <laughs> I order a strip steak, and I thought I was being conservative, and then he has a meat medallion on his plate, Nate, and I go, leave it to the fat guy to get the forearm-sized piece of steak. I think Nikki's steak was the one where in fine print it says, if you eat it, you not only get it free, but get a free t-shirt. For sure. That's how big it was. It was just a ribeye. For sure. It was That's a good-looking steak. The rest of us got, you know, eight-ounce fillets, you know, because you got all this other stuff going on, and these two are like... Yeah, you know, just pack it up. Take, I'll, I'll take it home with me, and I'll eat it for the next four days. Porter house. I ate mine last night. <laughs> oh, I can still got mine in the fridge. <laughs> Ooh, that's lunch, baby. <laughs> anyway, so maybe we should come up with a um, a safe word for you when you get that going on. So what what should we use? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We can't stroke her because it's no. frowned upon these days. <laughs> maybe D block. You being a little D block. Haddish. haddish. I like haddish. Say haddish. Haddish. Had- haddish. I like that. How about mm-hmm. Black Leprechaun? No. That's racist. We got Black Jeez, Angus. Like that black. The steakhouse. Oh. Black <laughs> Angus doors are locked from the outside. <laughs> haddish. I like Haddish. Just don't scream it. Don't say yeah. Haddish, 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 Haddish. Be cool with it. You got to be cool with it if you're going to say Haddish. I will, man. Yeah. He won't be. Haddish. No, that's not cool. Try again. Had Radish. Mm-mm. Try again. Haddish, Haddish. No. Haddish. Be cool. You know how to be cool. Whenever you imitate yeah, them, dog Kevin, haddish. haddish. Oh, Nikki, look, they dog. have the corned beef haddish on the menu. Okay, there you go, Nate. That's <laughs> what you got to do because they did have corned beef haddish there. You, you know, said that. You know, once I haddish AIDS. <laughs> oh my god! I didn't really have it. It was kind of haddish. <laughs> I think that'll quiet everyone. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like, what? Oh, well. Glad to see you've recovered. <laughs> Had she ever been raped? No. no. Oh. Nelson. <laughs> Just trying to find different ways to bring it up in conversation. <laughs> and now, now we know where the line is, I guess. <laughs> yeah. There is no line. <laughs> no <laughs> line. <laughs> So thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, all right. So Haddish is you. Denver's you. Denver. Yeah. I don't need one. So, all right. Cool. Excellent. <laughs> you don't need I one. I don't need one. <laughs> yeah. Sit next to me in the meeting. Next. I'll be there. Yeah. Well, that's the, yeah, that's the, uh, yeah, we got that. Taken. <laughs> that's the only time. That's the taken care of. All right. Finishing up. That was your bonus content. Thank you again for subscribing and continue to subscribe. Very cool. Very cool. Is that hair? Where? On your feet. Oh, no, those wrinkles. Oh, wow. Whoa. All right, Nate. Wow. Thanks that for jumping shit. on, buddy. Missed you. Yeah, it was good. To, we'll, uh, yeah, me too. We'll figure good this to see you guys. We'll yeah. figure this out. You guys can do your Mexico moment and all that stuff. And, uh, again, thank you to everybody for, for sticking with us through this transition. Be happy for us and embrace the future. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.